Good afternoon, everybody. It is Saturday afternoon. It's bingo afternoon. And we've already got some impalas. So before I even introduce myself, because I want to win really badly, please everybody confirm that I've got some impalas. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, what a lovely way to start, all joking aside. An impala lamb having a suckle from mum. But hello, everybody. My name is Ben. On camera, I have Paul, and I have a very special guest with me this afternoon because we are pulling out all the stops to try and win. Tess has joined me this afternoon. The as reigning well. champion. Hi, everybody. I'm Tess. Hello. In case you didn't know who I am, we're wearing matching shirts, and uh, we're excited to see. Hopefully, we win. And Tristan doesn't win. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now we are a team, but we're not functioning very well as a team because we can't even decide on a team name. Yep. So this is a live <laughs> and interactive experience for you. And obviously we want to hear all of your questions and comments about all the animals that we're finding, but we also need help with a team name, please. So something that works with Ben, Tess and Paul and Bingo, let us know what you think. <laughs> but we have got yes, a lovely scene up here on quarantine. We have we did have an impala lamb having a suckle. Mum did not seem too keen on this to, to begin with, but it seems that order was restored. Now, and somewhere in the background, and because we've been chatting, we've lost sight of them, there were also those ground hornbills that I heard them this morning, and we did see them somewhere. So we're going to keep an eye out for those. Kimberly, indeed, let the games begin. I'm yet to win uh, at Bingo. The best I've done is second, and this bothers me immensely. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I've called in the reigning champion test to help this afternoon. Uh, and of course, with Impala's assistance as well, I think our chances are pretty good. We've got quite a good board. I suppose we should actually probably show you the board, actually. Yeah, maybe. We've got a good board. We've done well this afternoon. You we left have... the strategy up to me, to be fair. I chose the board. I did, to be honest, because... There's a reason that Tess won last week, because she picks an easy board. <gasps> As you can see, we're a dysfunctional team. <laughs> <laughs> so we're thinking we, this is probably a good one. Kudu, lion, giraffe, dung beetle, hyena. So our plan is to go and follow up on the telemates from this morning. But we've got waterbuck, dwarf, mongoose, lion, hippo, buffalo. That's doable if the buff are still hanging around and by um, twin dams. Yeah, fish, eagle, terrapin, kudu, owl, crocodile. So this we could definitely do for, um, for you know, some dam hopping. But thank you for confirming as well. Yes, thank you, everybody. I think we should go big or go home. So I'm actually campaigning to be the first team ever to get all 25 in one <laughs> four-hour drive. So that's my plan. <laughs> the jackal might be a bit tricky. Uh, and the bush baby. might the bush baby. But everything else is potentially doable. Anyway, enough of us talking. Let's rather look at animals. Um, I think... Shall I move forward a touch yeah. for you, Paul? Or are you Let's good see if there? we can get the uh, sun ground hornbills. Yes. Because um, they were just in front. Hornbills, yeah, were, they've disappeared now. But I actually saw them this morning on the way back after drive. There were three of them that flew over Twin Dams Road. So it mm. seems they are patrolling quarantine. Last I saw them, Ben, they were moving behind the impalas. It's, uh, okay, let's move forward I mean, a touch and have a, have a look. Maybe we'll get lucky. Okay, while well we relocate on our ground hornbills, hopefully, yes, I see them in the distance. Uh, let's send you over to the weatherman and see what the weatherman has in store for us. Saturday afternoon and Dima de Quay. Oh. Good afternoon, everybody. Yep, got it. it is Saturday afternoon and Dima de Quay is jumping at the bit. Because the past few weeks we had bad luck. We had weather issues, we had power outages last week. This week we are ready and raring to go. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kevin. I'm going to be your naturalist. BK is behind the camera. And we've got our first candidate lined up right here. Top middle, there is elephant. And it is actually a quite nice big elephant bull that we got walking straight towards us next to the road. Thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. 
Hello, big boy. Come on. It was definitely in the water or the mud somewhere. You can see it's all sun is shining off his back. And he's going to walk straight past us. such a fun afternoon where me and my colleagues have a bit of friendly rivalry. Hello my boy. Yes, we see you. We see you. And off he goes. Is doing some fancy camera work again over his shoulder. So what do you guys say? Can we put one in the bank? One elephant bull. Thank you, everyone. Hey, BK, we've got confirmation. Hey, we're on the board. Thanks, everyone. We are, there's one elephant. Oh, let's do it nicely. There we go. BK, shall we continue down the road and see what else we can find? Come and join us. Let's head up the road and see what else we can add to our bingo board for this afternoon. Luckily, there's a bit of cloud cover, so it's not that hot this afternoon. We are grateful for that, for that. And we are going to head towards Chikudu Dam. My plan is, I see there's a dragon, dragonfly on the board. And see, we can find some dragonflies around the water's edge there. That's our plan. Fingers crossed. Right, Tessa, Ben, good luck to you guys. Let's head over to you. Good luck to everybody else today. Although dragonfly is a really cool one for the board, I think we should should invent some new ones with some insects on them. That would be amazing. Cicadas, dragonflies. Well, cicada would be nearly impossible. Maybe cicada audio. Anyway, we have managed to find the southern ground hornbill. They're giving us quite a challenge moving. But we could ultimately go around to Quarantine South, which is the road that they're right next to. But you know what they're like. If we get closer, they are going to they're going to move off. So we're going to keep moving forward slowly. So you'll hear Ben start the car. We're just going to keep it moving, try and keep them somewhere on camera because they are a distance away. But of course, we're trying really, really hard to, um, to get them on camera. I believe my audio is doing something a little weird. I'm body working on it currently. Yeah, that'll do Ben. Yeah, I can see out. one Yay. through the gap. There we yes, go. Yes, there it is. There it is. 
So right next to the bush there, you'll see there's one of them. This is the family of three southern ground hornbills that we've been seeing quite consistently recently. And in fact, we even saw them last Saturday for bingo. It's amazing to know that we've got such a rare bird species coming up and really just making themselves quite, quite a, I wouldn't say a resident in this area, but I, I almost want to say that because it's not that usual to have southern ground hornbills being consistent. And yet here we are with our largest ground bird that we have in this area anyway. And we seem to be seeing them more and more into the summer. It'd be very interesting to think, see if they nest somewhere. That would be very exciting because I don't see a juvenile here. It looks like three mm. relatively mature adults. Of course, they need natural cavities in trees and big natural cavities. So one of the reasons there aren't so many is the lack of nesting opportunities with deforestation and urbanization uh, and all the other problems that we do have a hand in. So yeah, imagine if we found... That would be amazing actually if we actually did have a nesting We've had before on Juma. Have we? Mm. We've had them before. Cool. There used to be a nesting pair in a big marula tree close to Gari Main. Um, and the, you can actually still see the hole in the tree. Maybe if we drive past, we can let you know. But we might have to move forward again. They keep us on our tires. Can't stay on our toes anymore. Yeah, and they come again into the gap. Sort yeah, of. that should work. We might see that one come out behind the tree. So, of course, the grass is really long now in summer, which means it's a little difficult sometimes to to see them nicely but the great thing about these birds is because they are majority black a bit of white on the wing and then of course that beautiful red wattle on the face and a bit on the eye you can really see them nicely when they lift their heads and incredible predators if anyone was watching last weekend when i did find these hornbills again we saw one holding something look i said it looked like a chunk of flesh with fur on we were trying to debate what it was and we wondered if it was a squirrel or a scrub hare and i i was very surprised to think that they would be able to catch something so fast moving but having actually spoken to tristan about it this morning uh, he said he's seen them take scrub hair a couple of times so maybe it was a scrub hair that i saw them with last weekend uh, but i did not really oh he just got something there i did not realize they could take out a scrub hair, that's pretty impressive. Tortoises, yes, I've seen them take tortoises. I've seen them pull chameleons out of trees and things. Snakes in the grass. Mm, snakes. Particularly puff adders. They've got a great success rate with puff adders because they're slower moving than things like cobras and mumbas. But I've seen them take a, a group of five of them on self-drive in Kruger Park. I've seen them take an impala lamb between five of them, which mm. I did not think was possible. But they are keeping us on our toes again. We are gonna have to move. Um, but thank you everybody for confirming it. We have now put a sticker on the board. We have two stickers. We, we have are two on stickers. fire. They are not all together that lined up, let me tell you. So you can see here, we've got two stickers on quite different places. So two different rows, two different columns, but I am excited to see if we can get the rest because remember it works five down, five across or five diagonally. And so the rows that we're going to be going for is the probably the two top ones across, this one down the middle and see how many others we can get in between. Even this one we could do. Fish, eagle, waterbuck, mm. rhino, elephant. But the hornbills are coming back out so we'll quickly go back to them just because they are such a rarity. And so it really is awesome to see these birds, such large birds, moving gracefully through the grass. Here at Wild Earth, we know it's not always possible to watch your favorite show live. If catching up on safaris is critical to you, then download the Wild Earth app and watch the catch-ups here first. Catch-ups are available on our app before YouTube and in addition, there are cut downs of each show for those who only have time to watch the best bits. <laughs> That's incredibly cute. Download the brand new Wild Earth app today and don't miss out.
Right, everybody. Bingo day, bingo day, bingo day. Right, first on my list, I need to find a lion. Those lions from this morning has moved out. The five that before, the other two somewhere in here. I need to find them. They are crucial. They are absolutely crucial to my to my plan. Because I've got a rather tricky board, so I need to be really resourceful here. And just to show you, well, my name's Chris with me, Panda Litz. Right. There's, 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 there's a whole bunch of curveballs here. Uh, little egret unlikely to see her. The dogs are not around at the moment. Okay, so there's already a gap. Um, hyenas are tricky. We've got the den, but baboons, very low in numbers here. There is no ostrich here. There is no hippo here. There's no water buck here. How do I have to go about this? Our answer lies here. I need lion. Elephant, I'm sure we can find. Giraffe, we'll certainly find. Impala, we'll certainly find. All right. Grey heron, good chance. There's someone, some of them sometimes at Leopard Dam, and there's also sometimes one at Ndlovo Dam. So that's my only, only, only chance, because these others, hippo, water buck, hippo again. Uh, these things do not live here. Okay, so we're going to target that. So crucial, we need that guy. We need to find these two lines, so let's give it a shot. Right, so I've just walked around here. They've gone further south east from where they were this morning. So I'm not going to go in here on foot. Uh, it's quite dense. Uh, and we also need to stay in the vehicle to keep driving to find uh, animals for our bingo. So what I am going to do, I'm going to drive around towards the copies and go and check if we not perhaps see them there. Right. I'm excited. I've been dealt a very tricky card today. But you know what? If I'm gonna win it, it will be a sweet victory. Knowing that I pulled it off. Okay. Right. I'm gonna get cracking to find these lions. Let's go over to Kevin and Madikwe to see what he's got. Back in Madikwe, we have some zebra grazing away. Beautiful with those coats against that green grass. And I think we are on a little bit of a roll, because just to the right we've got some impala. Impala is just to the right of the zebra, just behind. Guys, oh, sorry, it's not always easy. We have some impala, some young impala, year-old impala rams. Beautiful. Thanks, Biko. I know you're juggling with the frame of the roof. But look at that. Those little straight horns of last year's and look at all the white butterflies flutting around all over the show here as well brown veined whites so there's actually i think a few at the water's edge but uh, uh if you go a little bit left bk where that zebra was standing a little bit left and a little bit more there we go look in the grass here there we've got brown veined whites flutting around and guys all those three are on our bingo board three in a row a hat trick here at Chukudu Dam Can we mark them? Zebra has been confirmed thank you everybody so let's just get my bingo board properly sorted here and then let's look at zebra. Where do we was the zebra? I saw it. I saw it. There we go. That's our zebis done. And then we're just going to want wait for you guys confirmation on the brown veined whites. There we've got butterfly, and then our young impalas that was play fighting away. Hello, Egyptian geese. Good afternoon. Woohoo! All three a hat trick for Team Madikwe there. Nice BK, thanks everybody. <laughs> Let me just... Right, now next, seeing that we are here at the water, I reckon 
Butterfly, of course. Now, seeing that we are at the water, I think we should try while we are to see if we can't find some dragonflies here at the water's edge. That might be a challenging one. Nice, Chris. Let's head over to Chris. He's also on the board. And let's head over to him in Pridelands. All right. As we got going, we found literally the most common and also the first of my bingo animals. I mean, these guys need no introduction. And we've got some babies. I know our babies was later than usual. There's another one in the background. Beautiful. So if you agree with me that that's Impala, I'm getting my sticker ready. But anyway, while we wait for confirmation, just look at that uh, very clearly the metatarsal glands or fetlock glands in the back foot, those big black tufts. And that is a way to help follow each other and regroup when they run away from predators at night. All right, so we already have confirmation. That's, uh, I'm not even gonna say, is that your final answer? <laughs> right. So as I said, we're targeting this diagonal line. That's the only one that's gonna get me a win. All right, still looking for the line. I'm waiting for elephants to be called in when we see giraffe. We're gonna go back to Nglovo Dam now for the gray heron, but the Impala, there we go. We have a sticker. We're on the board. We're on the board. We're on the board. Yeah, and it's amazing. Suddenly there's a whole bunch of little babies around everywhere, you know. So our season is in full swung at the moment. In full swung. Thank you so much, Joyce. Just wishing us good luck for the bingo. This is going to be my most challenging bingo yet. But I am very optimistic about my chances. I reckon it's going to be a hard battle today. But I reckon we're going to we're going to give it a give it a go. All right. We want to circle this block. This is the block where those lionesses disappeared into. Okay, let's do it. The impalas are still up ahead. Right. Next one. Well, we're at Gary Dam and we have some terrapins. So hopefully that can also be corroborated. There's got a few terrapins. I've just seen some more closer to us as well. We did have a little group of about six or seven of them there a minute ago, but a few of them have waded out into the shallows and uh, disappeared. But Tess and I were just sitting here thinking this is a bit strange because this little sandbank here didn't used to be here, which would suggest that despite being in the rainy season and despite having had a reasonable amount of rain, it seems that it's already drying up, but the last week or two has been really rather warm during the day, so I guess it just goes to show with uh, summer weather. Yep, we get some rain, but a little bit of drizzle here and there doesn't uh, do enough to counteract all the evaporation. Um, but I think, still think for this time of year, there's a little bit more water in Gary Dam that I seem to remember, like Buffalsook as well. I, the, mm. the last, first time I came here, there was that big sort of spit of sand almost separating Buffalsook Dam into two. I haven't seen that at all during the winter. But very nice to see some terrapins. And we get two species here, the serrated hinged and the marsh. Very, very difficult to tell the difference from distant, from 
difference from distance. Well, there's a bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> uh, theoretically, the Marsh Terrapin is a little bit flatter, and the serrated hinged Terrapin has the hinge. Um, but you'd need to be a lot closer to see it. It's a little bit sort of triangular shaped, so the, the base of the scoots around the edge of the shell sometimes as well. But permanent water sources, whereas marsh terrapins are a little bit more nomadic. Those are the ones you tend to find in puddles on the road or in little seasonal pans. So likely to be serrated hinged terrapins. And we're still waiting for suggestions on team names, if anybody has anything anything mm. uh, cute and cheeky for us, let us know. Quite exciting. See all the little ripples around that island, little insects I'm guessing in the water, which of course will make up a good portion of the diet of terrapins. They do have some vegetative matter, but mostly eating little aquatic arthropods. There is still, there, there is one. Ah, oh, this is our luck. This is our luck. We, I promise you, I promise you, we had a dragonfly sitting here. We had him lined up, but we are just going to, there he is on the water, BK. Oh, no, but A is so fast flying. Huh? He's going to come back just a little bit to the left, BK. You've got him. There we go. Ooh, thank goodness. Up. Oh, fingers crossed. He's a little bit to the left. Again. Just a little bit to left B, a little bit down. Where is he? There he is. Now, we just moved a few meters along the edge here, and Beak and myself were straining our eyes to find you, a dragonfly. Now, sometimes it's difficult to see the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly, which is slightly smaller, but the reason I say, and it's off again, the reason I say that is a dragonfly, because when dragonflies perch, they sit with their wings 90 degrees spread to the body, where damselflies duck their wings in next to the sides. Now, guys, one of my missions for next year, for 2023, is that I'm going to want to learn more about dragonflies and the different species. Um, so I cannot identify the exact species for you, but there he is back again. See how he sits with his wings 90 degrees to the body? It's also mating season for dragonflies. You do sometimes see the pairs flying around. Dragonflies, let's put that sticker on. Now, everybody, it is currently, oop, it is currently a little bit of a mixed batch going on here. There's our dragonfly. Now, I reckon we need to start coming up with a bit of a strategy, a scattered all over the show, but uh, we're gonna continue and see what we find, and then hopefully we can start getting something together. But so far, so good. At least there's a few on the board. Thanks, everyone, for that island. As I said, I'm not sure exactly which species it is, but that's my mission for next year, is to learn all about dragonflies and the different species. Nice, BK. Shall we head down the road? All right. Upwards and onwards. Let's start up and get us off turned around and we're going to head down the road. Beautiful view of Chukudu Dam. Well, this is going to be a tight turn here, BK, but we'll make it. <laughs> Oh, here comes a hundred point turn. Uh, forward, back, backwards about 20 times, yeah? But we'll get there.
<laughs> what are you laughing at, VK? <laughs> uh, having some fun on the drive. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Thank you, Gigi. We are doing our best. Where are we going to find an ant? <laughs> an ant. <laughs> we'll just have to drive very slow and have a look, I suppose. It's the only way. I suppose we can't cheat. I suppose we can't cheat with termites either. <laughs> Has to be an ant. An ant. Yeah, look at all these brown veined whites all over the show. Right, while we're going to look for ants, we're going to head over to Tessa and Ben and see what they've got for us. Luck, Kevin. It sounds like you're going to be looking for some ants, so good luck. But I'm sure you will find some if you look hard enough. <laughs> uh, we have found some inyalas, but unfortunately, we don't have any inyalas on our board. We're looking for the inyalas, big brother. We want the kudus. I did consider saying these were kudus and uh, claiming ignorance, but Tessella wasn't allowed to do that. <laughs> So we've got a couple of females and we've got a couple of young bulls in the mix as well, although in classic fashion they're just disappearing behind the tree. We actually came up here looking for a water buck and the lions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's not going so well at the moment. Uh, but I'm just going to move us forward so you can see those nyalas from behind the tree. Do we have a butterfly? We, we have do. a butterfly. We have a but butterfly I see a list. butterfly flitting over there. But This is a pretty good place for some monarchs. With all the little flannel weeds. There's a monarch flying off. I don't know if we get that. Can you see the. There's one oh, right here. Is it going to land? There's quite a few flitting around. You're just going to see possibly some orange flashes though. Because they are, they move so fast. Let's see from Paul. There is a monarch right in front of us. He's hovering so But he is hovering. Can you see the, the butterfly there and Paul, the orange one? down here on the grass in between kind of us and the nyalas or us and the tree actually so can you see the pink flower pink. yeah directly in front of i can see lots at of about flowers. 90 degrees to us <laughs> <laughs> we are asking for the almost impossible here with the movement of the flannel weeds in the grass it is so difficult to to get something as small as a butterfly flitting through and of course now it's landed as well so we'll shout if we see it again but at least you can see the nyalas <laughs> i think we should uh, get a pair of um those plastic kudu horns and if we can get those onto a nyala <laughs> then maybe we can consider it a kudu stick a couple of vuvuzelas on them <laughs> <laughs> not a bad plan <laughs> Anything to win. Anything. Oh, there comes a butterfly. There goes a butterfly, look, look, look. And Paul. Oh, I don't know if you could see it there. There is an African monarch butterfly flying through an orange one. But I suppose we'll have to see if it comes back out. Mm. But it is nice looking for some of the smaller things. And speaking of, we're going to have a look at a beautiful and very different memory. I think this is probably one of my favorite ones for the weekend of... Uh, a red crested kohan and a spider hunting wasp having a bit of a, a standoff and a bit of a interaction. Oh, look at the, oh, oh wow, look, did you see what happened there? That bird, uh, the, there's a spider hunting wasp there, it's stinging the bird. 
because um, it, uh, look at that. It's, <laughs> this is amazing. The spider is on the ground. Watch, the bird is going towards it now. You see the wasp is trying to get it back. This is amazing. The red crested Quran has stolen the spider's, I mean the wasp's spider, and now the wasp is trying to get it back. That is amazing. This is really incredible. And look at that wasp, it's not giving up. All right, but that's a very interesting clip. That is not something that you see every day, for sure. But a lovely example of what we call interspecies competition between two different animals. You get what's called interspecies and intraspecies. So intraspecies would be two animals of the same species. Interspecies competition is two animals of different species. And who would have thought you would see a spider hunting a wasp and a Quran having an interaction? That would not be top of your list of expectations. Yeah, I think, you know, that that common prey species, looking for termites, looking for ants, I think it's it's very cool to see something so unusual. I've never seen an interaction like that between a bird and an insect. Highly unusual. No, not that I can think of. I wonder which, which came first, whether the spider had, or the wasp had paralyzed the spider first and then the Quran tried to take it, or whether the Quran was trying to feed on it and the spider was trying to steal it. I wonder which way around it was. <laughs> the wasp, yeah. I mean, certainly very unusual, but I mean, I suppose when you've got so many different species you could go for on the ground, uh, what are the chances of having both of you go for the exact same one when there's such a high population of insects, arachnids? It's just so unusual. Our nyalas are disappearing on us again. Look at them. They're just constantly moving, just like those southern ground hornbills, heading down towards the thickets. But unfortunately, none of them have an oxpecker on, and we've also realised that we do have an oxpecker on our board. And I've got some impalas on the left as well, and I can't see a single oxpecker either. I can hear oxpeckers, but we need to find an oxpecker. And unfortunately, the butterflies have disappeared too. Mm, occasional flitter, but yeah, well, a flitter we'll flutter, a flutterby. Flutterby. Maybe that should be our team name, the flutterby. The flutterbys, possibly. Yeah, it's not a bad plan. Do that. All right. Shall we see if we can? Uh, yeah, let's see if we can track down this, a water buck somewhere. <laughs> and the lions. We haven't had very good success with and the lions yet. You know, no, considering that they were left... Track. <laughs> considering that they were left kind of on quarantine, I feel kind of strange we haven't found them yet. <laughs> but on such a cool day, they move, right? Yeah, we do often have one or two water bucks hanging out here on this eastern side of quarantine. We did go past Gary Dam, where we found some terrapins uh, for our board. But, yeah, we're hoping to tick off a water buck somewhere. I think very likely they uh, didn't want to see the... Uh didn't want to see the lions up close and personal, and that's why they left. Oh, it's a great spotted cuckoo that just flew overhead. Wow. Where did he go? I don't know. I just want to check to see whether... Oh, no, they're, they're flying. Flying off. The great spotted of cuckoo being chased by a starling, because the great spotted cuckoo being a brood parasite, they parasitise most members of the starling family, and we've got lots of them uh, up here on quarantine, so that was very cool to see. I couldn't place the call for a minute. But I saw the shape of the cuckoo, and a, a cuckoo in flight looks almost like a little bird of prey. And uh, we think that's possibly one of the adaptations uh, that cuckoos have, that a quick fly by, scares the bird, the bird flies away because it thinks it's a predator, um, and then that leaves the nest exposed for uh, parasitism. No sign of our water buck, but we do have a little steenbok uh, off to our left. Oh, it's digging. That is amazing. So it might be getting itself ready for a little bit of a bathroom break there. Absolutely brilliant to see, but uh, I'm sure it'll be here for a little while. Oh, not a bathroom break. <laughs> but for now it sounds like Tristan has some elephants, so let's head over to him. I think they might be on his board. Well, we're going to try and see if Rooster's going to behave itself and hopefully be able to actually participate in 
in this afternoon's bingo because um, we've been struggling a little bit. But we have some elephants, which is always wonderful and a good way to start one's day. And we will get into them shortly. My name is Tristan. On camera, I've got Rian this afternoon. And this is lovely to have you all aboard um, for a Saturday afternoon of bingo. Like I say, hopefully we'll be able to actually do some bingo and participate in the whole game, um, given that it is a little bit... Um, tricky with respect to the moment and what's also tricky is that our elephants have just walked away from us and left us for dead um, in this horrible thicket. You can just see a bum sticking out there. Um, we do actually need elephant on our bingo board. Um, we've got a... I was actually not even involved in this choosing of my bingo board. Tessa chose it and put it on my car um, and so probably what we'll do... Um, what we'll do is we'll try and see if we can do this one row that is fairly, should be fairly easy. I had a dung beetle earlier, but we had no signal. So we'll try and do this row here, which is elephants. So we'll just stick a little red dot down there. Um, and then ox pecker should be fairly simple. Um, fish eagle and water buck, maybe chitwa. And then, like I say, dung beetle we'll have to try and find. But that's whether or not we actually have any sort of... Uh, luck with getting rooster to work on chitwa itself um, these ellies like i say they weird every time we kind of move they try and move into thicker deeper bush um, so it's difficult to to kind of keep them um, in visual um, they kind of just keep going through these thickets and so we're trying to keep up with them but alas it is proving to be pretty difficult Hello everybody and welcome to Amakala with our jackals. Very sleepy jackals at the moment. Just one. The others are definitely close by. They've been moving around this area the whole day. We spent we spent <coughs> excuse me, a lot of escape to nature with them as well. And they are on our bingo board. My lucky bingo. My lucky safari, excuse me. <laughs> so 
Uh, if we had to talk strategy for a moment, definitely we wanted to visit the jackal pups and we didn't just want to leave them out because they weren't going to be on our board. So we chose a board with the jackals on it. There they are. And so if we go with the jackal route, we'll have to get a giraffe, shell duck, ostrich and a kudu as well. Um, but we could also go elephant, jackal, butterfly, tortoise, pied crow. Lots and lots of things to think about when it comes to bingo, when all I am thinking about are the jackal pups. It's been really overcast in Amakala, so we've been finding lots of little things. And here is one little thing that we found earlier. It looks like a little crab spider. It is very tiny, probably half of my pinky nail. Now, the reason we found this crab spider is because... <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it, Morgan. <clears throat> it's because we heard that Kevin was going to use a picture of a of an elephant and and get it tagged on his bingo board we said no ways that can't be well i'm gonna put a beard on and i'm going to uh, be kevin and get whatever he gets as well and so that's how we ended up with this old man's beard around my face and then i figured out that there's a spider living in it so while we were having fun we found you some Content, some spider to look at in the old man's beard. So I think we should get all of whatever Kevin's got on his board and um, strike out shell duck and put spider and put a jackal sticker. <laughs> I think it's only fair considering the trouble that I went through to have a beard like Kevin. I think my beard was a little bit uh, longer and more wispy though. Oh, it's proper nap time. Hi Val, you're saying that you're loving the jackal segments. It's just because they're so adorable. And if when they're napping, they're just very cute. And when they're moving about, it's just so interesting to watch them and their behavior and the way that they play. And obviously when the parents come along, it's even more interesting because we get to hear all their vocalizations and then also the way they interact with the parent, the way that they beg, etc. Yay, my jackal has been confirmed. Let me fix a nice sticker onto my jackal. Huzzah! Done! The strategy, though, is to just try and get as many as we can. Thank you, everybody, for confirming my jackal. Does my little jackal even know that it's managed to get us a point on the bingo board? Clearly not. Anyway, let me send you over to Chris. He's managed to get an elephant. I hope that the elephant is on his bingo board. Right, and Lower Dam produced. And Lower Dam produced indeed, indeed, indeed. I am going to start retrieving another sticker since Elephant is on my list. But now I'm sitting with a bit of a conundrum. Where do I put it? I've got two spots for Elephant. And both are potential bingo lines for me. But let's just watch him. Having a nice drink here at Ndlovudam. seen this bull before. 
got that hole in his right ear. And then that very characteristic two notches. Well, it's left for us, but it's his right ear. And that's something that you can use as an identification marker. I have seen this guy before a few times on Pridelands. Hi there, it's Candy Boy. He's asking why is elephant bulls always alone? Um, they're not always alone, in fact. Uh, some bulls choose to be alone, and some bulls choose to walk around with other bulls in almost like bachelor herds. We see that quite often here. However, uh, it seems to be a matter of personal choice. Some bulls naturally seem to be more like introverts, and they don't tend to like to associate with other bulls often some of the bigger bulls when they are in must will then also go solitary for that period not always but often right panda now we need to think here very very wisely what is the best place to put it if we put it there we still put ourselves onto that line and it will take us to two. If we put it there, butterfly is doable, hyena is possible, kudu is very possible. We know lions might be around. So I don't know which one. Which one do you think, Panda? So we just go for the secure score and smack them two? Panda agrees. Let's do that one. I'm sure we'll find more elephants, which is a different sighting, and then we can add it there. You know. Interesting. Right, so we are officially on two in our diagonal line here. So my plan is unfolding, and I'm really hoping that it will bring us success. Slow start, but we're getting there. Well, I'm going to go off to find another group of elephants and perhaps lions or giraffe or grey heron. In the meantime, let's go over to the tandem team at Jumo who's got something wild and exciting, Tessa and Ben. Thank you, Chris. We have indeed managed to relocate on these Talamati lionesses and the cubs. We've got visual of this one female sleeping very peacefully on top of her little throne here, an old termite mound, with one cub. There's another cub down the base. And we're just trying to, well, we will move shortly. I'm sure the rest of them are just sheltering on the other side of that mound. But what a fantastic view we are getting of these two. Very similar to the uh, Davangumi sighting I had last night with him also resting on a termite mound. It's amazing how these um, termite mounds are perfect resting places. It gives them a little bit of wind, it gives them good visibility, a little bit of safety and psychological advantage as well of being up high. It's not always check termite mounds when you're driving around. Cheetahs as well, very well known for taking a high point. Absolutely. And it's really nice as well to catch up with some of the, the different lines. I haven't seen the Talamati breakaways, the Cubs and S8 in quite a while. And of course this week we know we had to say goodbye to one of our favorite Wild Earth characters. So um, We all know that Darkman has a very special place in all of our hearts. And his legacy is strong. It's going to live on for many years to come with all of those different Cubs. Well, sub-adults I suppose now. But to celebrate the life of this absolute legend that we said goodbye to this week, myself and Tristan are going to be hosting an AMA tonight, Saturday the 26th of November. So we'll be answering all the questions you have about beloved Dark Man. So if you would like to come and join us at 8pm Central African time, 
pay a little bit of a tribute to Dark Main and remember it's open to explorers only. So hopefully we see you there and we can get through as many questions as possible. Excuse me, it's actually very nice to see them out in the open considering it is still the heat of the day but it is relatively cool. The weather doesn't seem to know what it wants to do today. Some forecasts are saying it'll be nice, other forecasts are saying it's going to be cloudy but it's not hot which is the main thing. So normally this time of afternoon you expect to find lions completely flat under a bush. So very nice to see them out in the open even if they are sleeping. I think we have also got visual of S8 now. Uh, but I'm going to relocate the vehicle and see if we can get a better view so we can show you him perhaps when we come back. It's all time. And look who's joined us for our sun Saturday afternoon bingo party. We've got a little baby ground squirrel. Here you can see it. Just having a bit of a rest. We also had a fam big family of bandit mongoose, but they disappeared at the back there. But yeah, we've got a very very small baby ground squirrel here still. It's here very close to their den. Their den is right here, almost close to where they, he or she is lying there. It's got its little head up. Thank you everybody and guess what? We've got squirrel on our bingo sheet. <laughs> oh, look there, where are our squirrel? I saw it here somewhere. Squirrel. Mm -hmm. Yes. There we go. Oh guys, have a look on the screen there. I'm just gonna quickly put the squirrel sticker on. And BK has picked up on those bandit mongoose again. Right, there's our squirrel. Thank you very much for that. Let's find that bandit mongoose. BK, where did you see them in in the back there again, huh? Yeah, I, I'm sure they they want to come towards this little seasonal pan here. I'm sure. Let's just. In the meantime, can you guys see all the? Can you guys see all the butterflies? Floating. Where are they? I'm looking. Yes, I'm looking. They keep moving in the in the background, guys. We're gonna try and get you a better a better visual. We are searching for our troop of bandit mongoose. BK keeps on picking up on them, but they're fast moving. BK, where they are moving to the right still. I wonder if we shouldn't check on the road here. Or shall we just be patient, what do you reckon? And we've got to, mm, let's, quickly, let's quickly peek around the corner here. If they didn't maybe cross the road. Because they were moving to the right. Bear with us, let's quickly go and see if we can find them. Do -do. Come on, Bandit Mongoose, we need you because you're on our list. You're on our bingo board. Hi there, Susan Blue. Yes, they are fairly common here. And we sometimes, there is an elephant up the road. BK, we're needing elephant, another elephant for our list. It just disappeared, but let's concentrate on our Bandit Mongoose. I'm just going to check here. 
Susan B. Lou, yes, they are common. We find some quite big families here as well. Also your dwarf mongooses, yellow mongoose, slender mongoose, let's go up the road there, BK says, and also your white-tailed mongoose. But they are fairly common here. Let's go up the road quickly, BK says. He thinks that is where we stand our best chance to see them. Because, and this was quite a big, big family as well, big troop of mongoose. All right, where are you, where are you? This might require some quick and fancy camera work. But luckily we've got the right guy behind the camera. So I'm just gonna slowly go up the road, scan the thicket. Come on, you little guys, where are you, where are you? It's quite thick in here, BK. Impatience, impatience. They would have probably popped out back there by the water, but just can't help ourselves. <laughs> it was worthwhile to have a look. BK, I think let's, uh, let's go and park up again. Guys. While we're at it, I'm needing your further assistance, please. And it is just to confirm that we've got more brown veined white butterflies flying all over, drifting all over your screen. You'll see them permanently. It's a permanent wave of them this time of the year. And I'm also needing one more butterfly for our bingo board here in Madikwe. So that will be very much appreciated. You'll see them fluttering across the sky. And uh, let's play the patience game with these mongoose. I'm sure they'll pop out. Almost thought I saw them. And there's a strong chance that we might have some warthog coming in to this little pan for a mud wallow. So that might work for us as well. So I think we need to play the patience game. Let's sit here for a while. Ooh. Well, I'm going to go other way and then with our back into the sun so that we don't have to sit in the sun. Turn us around here somewhere. Oops, yep, that's a bit of a hole. And this is where we're going to park. Get BK out of the sun a little bit more, because he's on the left hand side. All right, this is where we're gonna sit for a little bit. Waiting for some war dogs, waiting for those bandit mongoose. In the meantime, let's head over to Tessa and Ben. We are very happy. We've repositioned and we have got some of the cutest looking line poses you have ever seen in your life. Team Bingo Flamingos for the win. We have chosen a name. We actually came up with it ourselves this time. We, we did get some interesting suggestions, so thank you for that. But we realized Ben and I both go really pink in the sun. And I think we're both quite fabulous. And Impor just brings, you know, the muscle from the flamingo in there. So <laughs> Team Bingo Flamingos for the win. Now, lions are, in fact, on our bingo board. Oh, the male's coming in. He's just behind the bush, but he might come closer. Let's see. Yes, there's S8. Oh, he looks fabulous. He is an absolute stunner, isn't he? He's a showstopper. A showstopper. Look at him. Incredible stuff. And because these are on our bingo board, we now stand at two as our overall score. Kevin, I believe, is on three. Chris 
on two as well and Tristan and Trish both on one. Oh, exciting stuff everybody. And so we're just waiting for S8. Okay, he has laid down so we can reposition for him just now. We just couldn't really move while he was walking behind us. But you can see some very cute poses from the cubs. And that one lioness in particular is my spirit animal today. Leg in the air. But I think Ben's spirit animal is this very cute little cub with its paws kind of splayed over the grass here. Kind of just above that lioness. You see there on the left. Yeah, Look it looks very it. comfortable, that one. <laughs> I love Watching it. Looks us so with cute. Fascination. You might be able to hear there's a couple of other vehicles here. Obviously, it's going to be quite a busy sighting this one this afternoon. So I don't know how long we will be able to stay here. But you can just watch these. The females, the adults, completely oblivious. They've seen this all before. But for the youngsters, this is all very interesting. Things moving and lots of interesting smells. Lots of interesting smells, I'm sure. But already just in the time that we found them to the time that we are sitting here now, there are quite a few different vehicles interested. So like Ben said, we might not be able to stay for too long at the moment, but we can always try to come back a little bit later. We're quickly heading over to Tristan. Well, we've managed to find a snake. We heard birds going crazy. I can't see what snake it is at the moment, but they're all mobbing it and giving it a hard time. It almost looks a bit black mumberish or spitting cobra. You see how the birds are dive bombing and making a lot of noise. Um, we can just see the sort of belly of the snake hanging down towards where that bird is. Um, but I can't see what snake it is properly. Um, Difficult to spot. It looks like it's super easy with a camera, but I can assure you when you zoom out It is anything but easy to spot that snake um, If it wasn't for the birds making noise like this, then we would have really struggled I mean, it looks just like part of the bush. I wonder if we maybe just maybe go forward a little bit and just see I'm just gonna start You guys will see how difficult it is to see that's our point of view Let's Try now but the fact that the snake's not moving makes me wonder if maybe it's not either grabbed a bird or something is going on. Because it's not moving around my all, but the birds obviously are going absolutely crazy. You can just make it out on the right hand side of the frame there, up a little bit, Rian. There we go, that's its belly there. Um, I think it might have a bird already. But what snake it is, is difficult to tell from here. Mumba would be my guess. Um, that's what I potentially think. But let's try go round. What do you think, Kat? Yeah. I think so. Oh, this car. I was, at first, when I heard birds alarming, I was wondering if maybe there wasn't a leopard because we or lions around because there's tracks for lions and it looked like maybe tortoise pan. So we came here, and it's actually a little. Uh, Snake. As soon as I saw the birds bombing into the bush, I was quite certain it was going to be a snake. We don't have snake on our bingo board, but it's still super interesting to see. I can see the snake here, but I can't see... Uh, it's raiding a nest. That's what it's doing. You see the nest is there, and it's actually going into the nest. So just go up a little bit, Rian, straight up there, straight in. Now there is the nest, and you'll see the head of the snake every now and then poking in around the nest site. It actually looks like it's coming down. No, still poking around. Just come out a little bit. It's coming down the tree. Yeah, you can just see it moving, coming down. There we go. What is it? Mamba. It is a mamba. You can see the size of it and just the general shape of it. So it's going into the grass and obviously it's going to go away from now. Um, all the birds are, are alarming and mobbing it. They're trying to get rid of it, trying to chase it away um, and trying to get it to go somewhere else. I'm hoping that it's going to come out. There, it's on the right hand side, going on the right. No, further, you, no, unfortunately you missed it, it's gone into the next tree. Um, just follow the birds, where the birds are, is where the, the snake will be. It's just on the grass there. Might go up into that quarry bush. 
And you can just see its head coming up every now and then. Alar Oliver, so alarm calling and trying to mob the, the snake and try and like hit it with their beaks and just generally try and irritate the snake as much as possible. I mean, I didn't get a nice view of the head. It looks like it might come out here to the right. You see where all the babblers are? There, it's coming out. It's coming out straight here, at the bottom of the quarry, where the babbler is on the ground. The straight in there. Just zoom in for us. Go down, go down. There it is. And it's a female boom slung by the looks of things. I can't see nicely. It's got a massive eye. Yeah, a female boom slung. A big one though. Whew. Okay, but don't come in the car. It's one thing we don't want. <laughs> it's coming straight for the car. So he's going to go back because they like to get into the engine bays. And I don't feel like trying to get a snake out of rooster. It's a massive female boom slung though. Jeez, I haven't seen a boom slung that big in a long time. I can't see it now where it went. Just watch the bird. Wherever the birds go is where the snake will be. They'll bomb it and mob it. You see it's in the grass there. That's crazy cool. It's not something we get to see all that often is snakes. Um, so we, that's a, a very, very, very cool sighting. Like I said, I know it's not on our bingo board. To the right, to the right, Fian. There it is. Yeah. You can just see its head poking out now. I see that very oval shaped head with that very large eye. It's very diagnostic for a female boom slung. That's why it's nest raiding. They are big bird eaters, these guys. And so obviously whoever's nesting here is trying to chase them away. And here it comes back towards us again. I think it wants to go back towards the nest. So what we'll probably do is just maybe park and try and see... I just don't want it to come into the engine, that's what I don't want. Um, which it seems like it keeps wanting to do. But it's coming back towards us now. Where the birds are dive bombing. Crazy sighting. I just try to go forward because it doesn't seem to be too worried about the car. Oh man, this car, come on. All right, well, we're going to try to see what views we can get. In the meantime, though, let's change across to Chris, who's got some eddies. Actually, such a pity. We had all these elephants around the car just now. And Murphy's Law. They always, always do that the moment you get them up, they move. Okay, but we got them at least. <laughs> so that solves my conundrum where to have placed my other elephant, or the previous elephant. So now we've got the second elephant. So I think this is a breeding herd, in fact. There's some babies as well. One baby just crossed in front of us, but unfortunately, again, we can't control the animal movements. So I'm sure I can just wait for confirmation. It will come soon with these elephants as my second elephant sighting, which will open up my top row as well. Although it does not increase my score, it does open a potential top line for me. Confirmation got it. So I'll just put it on there. So, okay. There we go. Look at that. So now we're still on two on the diagonal line. But what this elephant sighting has done is open up that line for us. 
Right, let's take a look at these elephants. Where are they now? Oh, they to our right. Somewhere. <laughs> Right, we remember to send us questions. It's one thing I particularly like about being out here is to be able to answer your questions and elaborate on your comments. It's interactive. This is a live interactive experience. So, like always, let us know what you'd like us to find. I mean, obviously, it's bingo day. So anything goes. And this is, after all, your safari into the African bush. And that one is just smelling there. And now, why are you so angry now? Why does it scared you there? It's not us. Just looking in the other direction. I've smelt something. And that was delightful, wasn't it? Sounds like Tristan might have managed to get a better visual on his snake in the tree. So let's go over and take a look at the snake. It's going so, so fast that, I mean, not even the birds are keeping up. It's just crossed the road and gone quickly into this block here. You can actually just see in front there that the birds are just making a bit of noise. So it's going, it's trying to get to thickets where the birds can't get to it. Sorry about the pole, everybody. Let me just roll back slightly. But you can just see it just went in underneath there. We had a view of it crossing the road very quickly. And then it went up onto that little thicket in a matter of a few seconds, unfortunately. When snakes have been found and they're getting bombed, they, they just move super quickly. Um, so, you know, they, they try to get out, unfortunately. I thought we might catch it just coming across the road um, because they were it was just sort of coming slowly to the road and then all of a sudden it just went super fast um, across. And you can see the birds are also just slowing down a little bit. So I'm sure there's, it's looking for like a little hole or something that it can get into um, that the birds will stop giving it a hard time and it can then go about its business um, and carry on its hunting but what a cool find that's epic um, like I say not something we get to see very often at all sorry that we didn't get it crossing the road I thought like I said I was hoping it was going to just do what I was doing earlier which was a nice slow movement across the road but alas it did not do that <laughs> it went from 0 to 100 um, over there very very cool though like I said I haven't seen a boomslang that fat and that big in a very 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 long time um, so Pretty epic that we managed to find it. It's just difficult from the angle that it was at. It was kind of initially identified, but as soon as you see the head and you see that big eye and that sort of rounded shape head, you know straight away that it's a Wormslung. Now it seems like these lion tracks have gone to east, which must be the Talamatis um, that we found this morning. And that's Ben and Tessa with now, so we don't need to worry too much about that. All right, so let's get back to trying to actually do some bingo um, things and in the meantime let's we'll send you across to Trish at Amakala. That's the thing I find that when we're when we're playing bingo we have lots of sightings that are not on our board and it gets really exciting and then you want to also get stuff on your board but you want to stick with sightings and that sighting that Tristan had Sounds epic, absolutely epic. Well, here we have some ostriches. 
It's our ostrich family, actually. That's the male that we're looking at, and the chicks have gotten so big. Last time I was here, they still had their kind of hedgehog look, and you can see they're starting to become quite fluffy and more drab to look like the female. Still a little spot, still a little spotty in areas. But they don't have that hedgehog appearance as much anymore. There's a female off to our left there. Now it's starting to rain just a little bit. A little more than a little bit. It was spitting while we were sitting here. So we may have to leave these ostriches soon. But I'm very glad to have seen these ones again because it's always lovely to see an animal at one stage and then see them at another stage and kind of it's almost like seeing family members and you go, oh my goodness, you're so big. It makes me feel a little bit like an auntie. Because without fail, if I visit my family, say, oh, you look so big now. Well, I mean, before, now that I'm always big, it doesn't really count. <laughs> I'm sure that they will welcome <clears throat> the rain. The male's just gone up into those bushes, more to the left, but he's out of sight now. There he is, popping it there. Oh, yay, I can confirm that um, we can put a sticker on our ostrich. Yes. There we go. Oh, sorry, I dropped my sticker. This, the stickers aren't too sticky anymore, but there we go. So I just have to find a giraffe, a kudu, and a shaldak and hope that it doesn't rain in the meantime. Oh, they went my sticker. I'm going to find another more sticky sticker, excuse me. There we go, two in a row for Trish and Morgan team. That is our team name. Very original. I've actually been finding quite a few ostrich feathers on the ground recently. But they disintegrate. They disintegrate very, very quickly, but they're lovely and soft. Unfortunately, I haven't found one that is nice enough to present to you, but I will when I can find one. dark mane. Aside from the dark mane that gave him his name, he can be recognized by a distinctive limp. This limp stems from an injury to his right leg he sustained while taking down a buffalo with the Inkohoma pride.
back to Juma, everybody. Sounds like people are systematically ticking things off their board, which is good. Nothing wrong with a bit of healthy competition, as long as Tess and I win. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> well, we're not... We're, well, yeah, OK, we've got to get moving on that. Yes, we, we have a plan. Um, we do. But we couldn't leave without letting you have one more look at the beautiful S8 male. We managed to reposition to see him nicely, but as you can see, he is sleeping like a lion right yeah, next to us it, but we were admiring his mane when he did put his head up briefly earlier it looks like he's been through a wind tunnel it's kind of all swept back and he, he looked very spectacular today very majestic mm. but it's very thick and bushy which is always a good sign of um that he's been feeding well and he, he is in good condition and of course that acts as a, a beacon for females to show how much testosterone he has and what good condition and what a good potential father he's going to be in terms of looking after an area and protecting cubs so it is like a, a very much a, a visual communication device for females and also for other predators it is a it's a headdress it's uh, saying here i am look how beautiful i am and look how strong i must be to be wearing this thing it's his version of a crown absolutely the royalty See how massive those paws are. Mm. Paul, how did you send in the comment yeah, from back here? Yeah, you'd WhatsApping from the back of the car or something. <laughs> <laughs> but Paul, it is great to hear from you. Thank you for sending in a comment. Not the Paul in the back of the vehicle, but thank you, Paul, at home. It is wonderful to see S8 again. Yes, I haven't seen him for two. Oh. Probably about four weeks. I had him just coming across Sandy Patch a little while ago. And that's basically the only sighting I've had of him. I haven't seen him very often at all. Beautiful, isn't nice he? nice to have him here. Hmm. I'm glad that you're getting to spend a bit more time with him, Ben, because he really is. He's a huge male lion. He's in such good condition. Mm. No, he is spectacular. I've seen quite a few lions over the years, but I can't remember... With the exception maybe of a couple of those old boys from the Mapojo that uh, hung around um, on the Sabi Sabi's property for a little while. Um, they were incredible for a different reason. They weren't the most beautiful lions, but you could see the experience and uh, the things that they had gone through in their eyes. But he is equally impressive, certainly. Hmm. But, I mean, on such a beautiful overcast day like this, you'd expect the lions to be maybe a little more active, although filling out their lion role as usual, sleeping quite a bit. But maybe later today they'll be on the hunt. But speaking of, sometimes those hunts really just don't go as planned. In the next moment, we're going to see we had a pride of lions hunting a buffalo, but the strength of the buffalo was too much for the brave lion on its back. Let's have a look. Let's uh, stay with this lioness and buffalo because look how fascinating this is. Watch us stalking everyone. And as I mentioned, you can see the two lionesses now lying there, probably about 40 meters apart. Uh, I think the buffalo, has, oh, there we go. Yes, <laughs> this is incredible, everyone. Just again, everybody, for those sensitive viewers, um, watching it's not always easy to see but this is nature everybody so just um, just bear that in mind please and this is interesting let's just watch Five lionesses now. Watch how they'll try and try and keep that buffalo busy while that one lioness is hanging on. She won't let go. But look how strong this. Look at that. Try and get the legs out from under the buffalo. And how powerful is that buffalo though to be able to stand with this lioness on its back? Now they see the 
those other buffalo may also come back and help this one. And there's some elephant coming into the, the area now too. Let's see what happens. Wow, this is... Oh. Look at that. Managed to shake off that lioness and get away. Now with this elephant just off to the right, you might see it coming into frame. There we go. Let's see what happens here. Oh, you see the lioness is moving off very quickly. I don't like the elephant very much. Look at that, isn't that incredible? Well, that was a very cool clip. Uh, I've been lucky enough to witness that a few times over the years, and it doesn't matter how many times you see it, it's always very exciting, and you need to be very careful you don't get in the way of it as well, uh, with buffaloes blundering around everywhere. But yeah, just another illustration of the power and strength of a buffalo that even between, was there five or six lines there, that buffalo was still able to get away. Definitely one of the most difficult species for any animal to take on, even humans. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, just shows you how powerful lions are to actually get that right occasionally. Yeah, so I remember the, the southern pride in the south of the Sabi Sands. I once I mentioned it this morning, but I once saw two just two lionesses take out uh, one full-grown male dugger boy. <laughs> Stephanie, thank you for the suggestion of a team name. Team Bensa Warriors, Ben and Tessa, Bensa Warriors. <laughs> ah, that actually works quite well, actually, yeah, the Bensa Warriors. Bensa Paul. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we're fickle. We'll change team names halfway through the drive. That's fine. No problem. Yeah. We were going to go with the Bingo Flamingos, Flamingos, but I like that too. Bensa Unite, the Bensa Warriors. <laughs> I mean, Bingo Flamingos changed Bensa Warriors. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good change-up. It's a pretty good change-up. Indeed. But I think this might be the last uh, view that we're going to get of these lines for a little while. I'm sure we'll try again a little bit later. Um, but so we've got it is quite a busy sighting and we're not ticking off any other things on our bingo board so we have a plan from here we're going to head down towards treehouse dam and twin dam see if we can find those buffalo that i had this morning because if we get buffalo and hippo hopefully that is also in the dam we will have three in a row um, and we will be closing in on what will be a great victory absolutely can't wait for that I mean, it's just a matter of time, really. I hope the other teams know that. We're just giving them a bit of grace period, you know, <laughs> giving them some time to actually it's try and the be in the sporting chance. Yeah, yeah. That's, it's just how we roll. <laughs> Team Benza Warriors. <laughs> oh, it really is a lion's world. Look at that. Mm, it's got a good idea. All right, so as I said, we are going to head down towards Twin Downs and look for some buffalo. In the meantime, let us send you over to Trishala in Amakala. She has got something that she wants to show you. Looking at an impala, but that is not the purpose of why we've stopped here. I just thought I should show you the impala and give you an, a disclaimer before we show you what it is that we're looking at, because it is a carcass. It is the carcass of a giraffe. There we go. Now, the only reason I'm showing, well, there's two reasons I'm showing it to you. One, it's quite intact. So from this angle you can't really see, but all the ribs are intact, the vertebrae are intact, and it's quite neat to see because it's not something you get to see too often. When we see giraffe bones, they usually uh, have already fallen off the skeleton because things have come, to pull, have come to pull off it and things like that. And then the second reason is, is well, a, jar, a giraffe is on my list, and there's no rules to the contrary that says that I can't put a sticker 
um, for this carcass. I think this is also a, a good example of what it can be like if there are not that many scavengers on a reserve. So when this giraffe was killed, I have no idea. It's been here for a while. It's been here for as long as I've been here and it is super, super dry. And you can see all the meat is gone. But when we have scavengers, especially like spotted hyenas on a reserve, and there aren't spotted hyenas here, then you'll find that bones are scattered and pulled off skeletons a lot quicker. And to see one intact like this is really unusual for me because I'm used to being in reserves where there are spotted hyenas. So while a brown hyena will still scavenge this carcass, sca will still scavenge this carcass, will still pull on bones, etc. It, it's not the same as a spotted hyena where there's a massive clan that would do, or at least in the areas I've worked, that would really pull apart the skeleton. So like, I think it's neat to have a look like this. Now this is obviously from uh, a lion kill. I would think so at least. And it's actually quite interesting to see the way the legs are positioned. Because you can imagine how this giraffe would have been positioned on its side. And then the one leg slightly over the other. And at giraffe kills that have just happened, um, I know that how, that's how the giraffe ends up on their side with the legs over each other, almost crossed like this. And it's almost as if it was eaten and, the, and disintegrated still in that position because the majority of the eating would have been happening in the middle of the body, the meatiest bit. Yeah. Okay, so you guys agree that... There are no rules to say that the animal has to be alive for me to put a sticker on it. Thank you, giraffe carcass. I shall now place this there. So we need a shell duck and a kudu. Shell duck might be a little bit tough, um, but a kudu, I have a good feeling about it. I haven't, I've seen them today, but I've not seen one this afternoon. So we will hope for the best. I'll be quite satisfied if I can just make some of the guides shiver in their boots. <laughs> that Trishala might win the bingo. Oh my goodness. We cannot pa drive past the plains here without just having a stop and a look at all the plains game species out here. And we are seeing some springbok there in our screen. You also got some wildebeest with some zebra mixed in between a little bit further back. Actually, there's a very, uh, there's an alternative motive that why I stopped here. <laughs> so, the South Africans are fanatical about their rugby. Of course, our national team called the Springboks, and the Springboks are playing England this evening. So, we had to stop quickly. Uh, just to tell you that uh, Springboks are quicker than Lions. Go, Springboks! <laughs> Not only has these plains got plenty of grazing at the moment, but it's nice and open. And we're expecting that the wildebeest will start dropping their calves very soon. And late afternoons, early evenings, they start congregating here in their hundreds to sleep out on here, out on the plains. So there's a little bit of wind picking up. If you do pick up some wind, wind disturbance. And you'll find hundreds of 
especially wildebeest and zebra out here on the plains. Nice and open, nice and safe, many eyes and ears and they can see for miles. Right, so our bingo board hasn't moved on. Now we got off to a flyer hmm. and now we've gone a bit stagnant, but I've got something up ahead. I'm going to try for some baboon and see uh, if I can find that Wilbur eagle's nest. That is what we're going to concentrate on next. I was hoping that perhaps a kudu would just come. Uh, oh. No, but I think I saw a meerkat. <sighs> let's let's not get my hopes up. We're just going to sit here. I I saw the guinea fowl. I'll just sit tight. Maybe it was just a guinea fowl head lifting up. But there were meerkat in this area. Um, it wasn't reported today, but we know that previously there were meerkat in this area. So it's always a good idea to have a quick look. It's amazing how this carcass has not um, the hide is still covering a significant part of it, so the bones haven't gotten too bleached and disintegrated just yet by the sun. But soon it will, and all those nutrients will return to the ground and will become a, cr a crucial part of the maintenance of this ecosystem, as all carcasses do. It provides nutrients to the soil, which might be exactly what the grass needs, might be exactly what the trees need and then it becomes part of the competition between the trees and the grass. Hi rock candy, I think it was rock candy. You would like to know if I can tell if it's an adult or a, a young giraffe. It looks like a sub-adult because it's not quite long enough to be an adult but it's definitely not small enough to be a youngster so perhaps a sub a sub adult uh, wouldn't be able to tell the sex perhaps just even a, a small female even at this stage where the majority of well, all the meat is gone there's just a bit of skin left and the bone it's still hosting a whole lot of, of life from you know flies to ants to all those kinds of little creatures that are using this carcass for nutrients but also for a bit of shelter you know when you lift up a, a log and there's all those things living underneath the same would apply here there'd be a whole lot of life living underneath this uh, giraffe carcass life that wants protection from the sun little you know isopod um, type insects lava little worms all living underneath When it comes to death, there's so much that is sad about it and also not wasteful about it in the bush. And I always like to remind myself of the fact that all this nutrients doesn't just disappear, it goes somewhere. And of course, every animal has to eat. Now, Steve had quite an experience a while back. Steve and Gert, I think it was, and they were at Chitwa Dam, and some wild dogs took down an impala. It is a sensitive clip, but 
it is it really shows the perseverance of both the wild dog and the impala for both of their survival. Now guys, the dogs are on the dam wall itself. Um, one's on the bank here with me and the impala's swimming in the water. I'm not sure of the outcome of this. Okay, looks like the impala is almost giving up hope there. It's swimming right for them. Is it going, are they going to jump in and grab it? it wants to. Ah, oh, it's happening, it's happening. I've never seen this before. It's got it. Goodness, everybody, hold on. This is going to be incredibly savage. What an intense clip, um, you know, to see all the dogs like that and swimming to get their meal and the impala so desperate to, you know, save its life. And again, it's all, it's all part of how it is out here, it's part of the circle of life essentially. I'm looking at these very long bones in front. I wonder what they could be from. They can see the ribs. Or maybe it's one of the thinner bones. Uh, or maybe even one of the thinner ribs. One of the thinner bones and one of the legs, perhaps? But they are very skinny. And oh, Morgan, where's our Egyptian goose gone to? Before I send you over, I want to very quickly show you the Egyptian goose. And that is because I have shell duck on my list. And uh, I just wanted to say if you would accept such, but I'm not sure if you would, because I'm pretty sure it just means, you know, a straightforward shell duck. But mitochondrial DNA analysis has shown that Egyptian goose is more closely related to a shell duck than it is uh, to a goose, and that technically um, it could be classed as a shell duck. Just saying, just putting it out there. Anyway, let me send you over Oh, MC says it doesn't count. Oh, I didn't know they were involved in mitochondrial DNA analyses. Oh. <laughs> anyway, let me send you over to Ben and Tessa and Jim and see how, they'd go, how they're doing. <laughs> another tick. We've also got another tick on our board, if we can please... Uh, get it verified. In fact, we've actually got two ticks without actually having a tick on our board. Actually, there are no ticks. We should have ticks. Um, we've got <laughs> an oxpecker though, which is flitting around on that kudu at the back. You might just be able to see it on the on the back side of the one at the back. Uh, but we have kudu and oxpecker on our board, and I believe the 
wild earth bingo rules say that birds count as, as a second sighting in the same sighting, as it were. So we'd like to have both of those verified. Otherwise, when we find the buffalo, we will definitely tick off oxpeckers of that, I'm confident. But it's not unusual to see uh, antelope species, particularly kudu on the top of termite mounds, rather like the lions. And there is a sort of a fancy name for this behaviour. It's known as static optic advertising, which is a bit of a mouthful. Uh, but it's considered to be sort of the female showing sort of status and dominance, obviously getting a good lay of the land as well. But uh, in a sort of a herd structure, it's a way of adults to show their, their dominance and their social hierarchy. So apparently, which we only learned today, bushbuck do this as well, not just kudus. And I didn't really know that. <laughs> No, I've never seen a bushbuck do it. I've seen kudu do it quite regularly, but I've never seen... Is that the oxpecker on the... Yes, yes there's the oxpecker on the, the one at the back's rump. So we'll have both of those. Please, everybody watching. <laughs> not that we're competitive in the slightest. No, not at all. Never. No. Team Benza Warriors is uh, just, you know, average in terms of competition. Yeah, we're, we're, we're happy if we if we win. and Well, I'm not even, really happy I, if we don't. I can't even say the L word, no. <laughs> We don't lose, Ben. We don't we lose. Don't. We we will put up a good fight regardless. Yes, we will. Absolutely. We haven't seen a bull with this little herd of kudus yet. We saw probably about, I think it was five females. There were three on the termite mound just now, and then two kind of walked off towards the direction of Treehouse Dam. But um, maybe with that, with that advertisement that Ben was talking about, these might be the more dominant females taking that position higher up, showing a little bit of their... Their position, I suppose you could call it. But I don't know if you remember the other day I had a sighting of about seven, yeah, six or seven kudus and, and calves all up on that tiny little termite mound on quarantine. But they were getting, they, they were using it for a slightly different reason. They were getting a better view because then remember I found those leopard tracks on uh, quarantine south, on the western side of quarantine. So they were using it, potentially started off using it like this and then from that position spotted a leopard. So you can see why it would be advantageous. You can actually see the little oxpecker there hopping up and just scissoring through the beak. Remember we get yellow-billed and red-billed oxpeckers in this area. Yellow-billed far less common, um, but there is a good chance we might see a yellow-billed oxpecker on the buffalo because they do seem to prefer buffalo, although they, I've seen them on giraffe and even in parlour, uh, but more a little bit further south of here, strangely. Uh, but they were... We didn't have very many yellow-billed oxpeckers. They were rather decimated. I mentioned this morning the rinderpest virus that knocked out 90-something percent of buffalo species in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and that had a massive knock-on effect to the yellow-billed oxpeckers as well, and then also with uh, sort of dips and um, insecticides and things. That have, not insecticides, what's the word that I'm looking for? Um, um, pesticides. Pesticides, yes, uh, which uh, really had a bad effect, but they are recovering now, which is great. Dark Mane, our brave Avoca male that captured our hearts with a voice that boomed across the Sabi sands has now finally found rest. Join Tess and Tristan on the 26th of November for an AMA in honor of his roaring legacy as a son, brother, father, and as a fighter with a courageous spirit and strong heart that saw him through till the very end. Come with your questions ready.
We've been trying very hard to find signal and find bingo things, and we have had things, but we just haven't been able to get them on camera. So we found a green-backed heron eating a fish instead, which is pretty cool. Um, we uh, just saw it grab the fish, and now it's trying to get it down. It's a little bream species that it's trying to wolf down at the moment, um, which is amazing. It's quite a large catch this and in the space of two seconds we saw him grab well, her grab this fish and a uh, pike kingfisher also caught one so it was a two for one special for our birds at Chitra Dam but you can see how the fish to try not get eaten extends its spines so that when it tries to swallow it can't actually swallow properly you might have heard some elephants in the background they were here just now drinking as well um, as well as what we needed, which is ox pickers and water buck. But uh, unfortunately, the ox pickers have flown away. And, and like I said to Rena Gert, I would actually rather watch this green black heron because it's just fascinating to watch than worry too much about a bingo board right now. Um, sometimes there's cool things in nature that you've got to kind of enjoy. But isn't that crazy? When you can see the size of the size of that fish in relation to that here and you can see how it's trying to distend its neck and kind of get it down but because those spines are erected exceedingly difficult to get it down and so what it's trying to do is it's almost trying to kill this fish to be able to then relax those spines um, and then be able to swallow it it's also why they always face fish head first because the spines often flatten um, down from the head, kind of back towards the tail. Um, so it's a much easier way to be able to get it down. Isn't that crazy? I love these greenback herons at Chitwa Dam. They're endless entertainment. If you just sit here long enough, you'll get them. Come on, buddy. You can do it. I've once seen with these greenback herons, they catch a fish that's too big and they do this and they try and they try and they try and they try and eventually they actually leave it you know they can't get it down um, and then they let, leave it there and the fish actually flops its way back into the water if it's obviously in a timeless fashion that the fish doesn't suffocate because being out of water obviously is not good for anything with gills um, so I don't know if that'll be the case here this should be manageable for this heron it's almost like the fish has got it by the tongue. But imagine how big a meal that is. If you work out the relation of size to body weight and think about eating the same um, as a human, I don't think your stomach would actually be able to, or be capable of taking in the same amount of food weight-wise as what this heron is about to attempt now. <laughs> So this is that moment where it's like a meme where you immediately regret your decisions. <laughs> because that fish is not going down at all. It's not really changed position. Um, so we'll see now if it maybe tries to put it down on the ground and see whether or not it kind of... There we go, there we go, there we go. Isn't that epic? How amazing is that? You can see it's extending its neck just to try and get it down um, to be able to... Um, actually swallow and it'll go straight to water just to wash it down there we go just clean the beak out get it to slide down a little bit further which is pretty crazy um, amazing right now talking about hunting and being successful in hunting um, in the Maasai Mara there's a animal that is extremely efficient at hunting um, and it's something that people don't often think about but the hyenas there of the happy zebra clan they target buffalo and well there's, there's a bit of footage of how they try to take down a buffalo calf in the middle of the Masai Mara Triangle. Oh my goodness, look at this! There we go, it's on to the buffalo calf, another hyena's running in. Please be, be warned this is going to be, oh there's hyenas coming in from everywhere! Now, there's a buffalo bull, I need to keep up, sorry, that might come and help the calf. There's a big buffalo bull on his way in, but uh, the calf is really sick, we just saw it. There's one, two, three, four, five hyenas charging in. There's a big buffalo bull charging straight at the hyenas. 
trying to protect the the calf. But now, literally, that first boo sent in. I mean, that now we've got four hyenas. I can still see some more coming from the distance. So we just we just saw this buffalo calf on the road, and I just said, "Oh, it looks really sick." Then we spotted a hyena, and the hyena was walking towards it. It hadn't noticed the the, the buffalo yet, but as soon as it did, it charged. And look at the bull chasing those hyenas. Now, oh, guys, this is it, very, very, very disturbing to watch. I know. So if you are sensitive, please switch off. Now the whole herd's coming. The whole herd of buffalo are charging in. There's about 50 buffalo. It's the same herd of buffalo we're with on the sunrise safari. They're coming in in defense now. Isn't, oh, this is insane. But look at how confident the hyenas are, even with the buffalo bull here. Now, it's going to be very different, I think, when, oh, there's more hyenas coming. I can just see hyenas coming from the distance all over the place. Look, here comes a cow. She's coming in really seriously at the hyenas. Now, there's a gap, there's a gap. There's a gap, there's two buffalo away. There's hyenas coming in for the calf. Now that calf is sick. It, it really looked sick when we saw it. But look at this, tails up. The herd of buffalo charging in in defense. That was an incredible clip. In fact, uh, it's an area I still need to visit. I just interesting how that you know that bravery that the hyenas employ to try and take down this buffalo uh, the the buffalo calf in fact you know and how that herd was not going to stand for that bravery versus bravery isn't it that but anyway look what we got <laughs> all right we've got two sub adults from i suppose the ungati pride because remember there was eight Two broke away. Then we only found five. So it could be from the breakaways, but size-wise, I would definitely go for some of the Ngatis. So they obviously need to meet up with them. And they are in need of a meal. They're definitely in need of a meal, these guys. They will need to link up with the pride very soon. Especially the one on the right, not in the best of shape when it comes to nutrition. Right, so this brings me to bingo. Right. <laughs> okay, let's take a look here. I'm waiting for confirmation. We all saw that. I'm sure that's a lion. Right, so what? It's my only lion. I just got confirmation. Confirmation, there we go. Right, so we are officially on three on our diagonal line. So our original plan is unfolding. So now giraffe, funny enough, I've not seen a single giraffe this afternoon, which is weird. What, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my secret weapon. It's called technology, radio, and find out. But if we can get kudu and a butterfly before it's dark, and then perhaps later on visit the inner den and maybe, 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 we're lucky. <laughs> Hi, Terry. Terry's delighted that Catman has done it again. <laughs> Thank you, Terry. Interesting is what happened is I, I, I told Panda, you know, we, we, we kind of like losing hope because we don't know where the other two lionesses has gone to. We know the rest of the pride's gone north. So I, I, I said to him, listen, let's go back to Impala Plains. And Sometimes that pride swings back, and as we approached, we could hear these impalas alarming. And I told him, you know what, let's go and check out. And Panda actually spotted them even before I did, because he's like elevated. He could see far like an eagle. All right, so in order for us to call bingo today, we will need kudu, hyena, butterfly, or we will need for the other line, a giraffe or a grey heron, which is interesting. For the whole week, there was a grey heron at Leopard Dam, and today it's gone. But we're going to give it a shot. All right, let's go and find our giraffe. 
or our kudu. In the meantime, let's head over to Madikwe with Kevin. Chris, next on my list is hopefully some giraffe as well. In the meantime, we're looking at a colony of red ants. You can see there's actually quite a few holes here. It's a big colony, so there will be channels and everything underground connecting, connecting the nest. Now I'm sitting here on my haunches and from experience since being a small boy, I know that red ants you do not want to get them up your pants. Definitely not. But uh, yeah, we're looking at this colony. And of course, ants form a caste system. That only means that there are several individuals with several roles within an ant colony. So you've got your workers, the ones you're seeing here, soldier ants, your queens, and so on. And uh, yes, yeah, so there was one for our bingo board and over there uh-huh uh-huh well if we want to achieve that we need to continue but we've got a slight hiccup we've got a flat tire so you must give us a few minutes and thank you so let us change that tire and then we'll be rotated and then it is mission giraffe here from Madikwe. Right now I'm back in the vehicle B. I'm just going to quickly show you our board. Back in our vehicle. And there we go. And over there. Now, hmm, no line has been found in this northeastern section of Matikwe this whole morning and afternoon still. And I now I ask you with tears in my eyes, when you're looking for a hornbill or a grey goaboe bird, you see them every day. When you're looking for them, you don't find them, but we will persist. We will definitely persist. We might go and try our hyena den again, see if we can find the hyenas we had this morning on Sunrise Safari. That hyena, hyena is our mission. So we are just scanning to see if we may be not missing something. And then we're going to quickly change our tyre. <laughs> Never a dull moment. So in the meantime, I'm looking for hornbills. They are normally so abundant. Any one of them will take. Grey hornbill, yellow-billed hornbill, red-billed hornbill, we'll take any hornbill. So we're hoping, we are seriously hoping that our hyena den is active. And it's likely not too far from here. Well, tire change first. That will be about a 10 minute affair quickly. And then we'll head off that side and that's about 15 minutes away. And we're hoping that that might be active. We had a very stunning sighting of hyena cubs this morning. And then, yeah, so we hope that will make Team Adikwe Bingo Kings for this Saturday, 
the 26. But we're definitely not counting our chickens before the hatch. So we are rooting for our, our other colleagues as well. Hey, BK, are we here? Mm-hmm. Are we rooting for our other colleagues? Yeah, for second and third position. Yes, as BK saying, we're rooting for them for second and third position. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Well, we're still at Chitra Dam, and so we can actually start participating a little bit in this bingo competition. Um, it's a very long distance view of Waterbuck, but we need them for our board. So hopefully you guys can see them from the distance that we're at there, where they are very, very, very far. Um, unfortunately, this is what happens, um, is that they lie on the other side of the dam, and we can't actually drive the road that goes on the, along the dam unless there is one of the big five on there. Um, because it's an off-roading kind of situation um, so we can't go and just drive up to that area so unfortunately it's a very very long distance visual of them um, what we needed to complete our bingo board which would have been fairly easy as a fish eagle here but there's no fish eagles in sight so it's just water buck and I don't actually know where I'm going to find a fish eagle it's going to be very tricky now that there's not one at Chitwa Dam um, because the others we would have gotten we actually had had dung beetle earlier already and we've had ox peckers too but obviously we haven't been able to get them on camera so we'll try to get ox peckers but I don't think we are going to be in this race unfortunately um, it's the hazards of being on rooster is that bingo is not something that you can actively participate in for a lot of the time um, but we'll try you never know we're here and we can sneak a little win now we'll just put our little sticker on waterbuck because apparently we have confirmation which is good i've been watching the hippos to try to see if the oxbeck has come back but they uh departed they were all sitting on the back of hippos earlier um, but they don't sit for long they kind of come down they drink a little bit and then the hippos go under and the oxbeckers fly away so getting oxbeckers won't be difficult we'll just go to Chitwa airstrip there's multitudes of animals there and so lots of oxpeckers hanging around the impalas and wildebeest and the likes that are up that side watch me go there today and there's not a single oxpecker in sight um, it will be par for the course I think um, at this stage um, but let's see there's our hippo we actually do have hippos on our bingo board too and a baby bird at that um, but it's not really on a line that we can actively fulfill um, with the timing that we have left this afternoon so I'm not going to worry about it and also I think we have to do different things in different segments so we won't worry too much about hippos um, they uh, like I say are part of our board but we don't have to worry okay we have confirmation so we can put a stick on for our hippo we'll do it anyway so we don't look so like we are just the the most useless team out here this afternoon. Um, <laughs> we actually should be. A, we, it would be nice if we had snake and kill um, in the form of a fish. If we could get bonus points for those. Both of those are, um, which is very difficult. Now we're going to try and show you the board with the stickers. Um, Apologise if I might be slightly out of sync. Um, but there is our water buck and our hippo slap bang in the middle. So like I said, hippo would be very difficult because A, we can't find a fish eagle at Chitwa Dam. And if we can't find a Chitwa Dam, we're probably going to struggle everywhere else. Wild dogs, the closest wild dog is in Mala Mala. Giraffe, I suppose we could have found and bush baby, they've also been very difficult. If we do the diagonal, scrub hair is possible, rhino is possible, and crocodile here at Chitwa Dam is possible, although I don't see them at the moment. And then coming this way, we would have had to have dung beetle and good luck finding a jackal on Juma at the moment. Um, I haven't seen a jackal on Juma in many months, so that's not going to happen either, I don't think. Obviously, the leopard at the bottom would be ideal, but that's how it goes. All right, let's carry on. Let's go and see if we can find some ox peckers, and then we'll come back this way just to see if maybe a fish eagle is lurking. In the meantime, let's send you across to Tessa and Ben.
Thanks so much, Tristan. Good luck on the ox pecker hunt. We have luckily ticked those off already. So thank you everybody for confirming our kudu and ox pickers earlier. On this side, we have now got another one for the board. So please do confirm it. I'm sure you know exactly where we are. We are at the hyena den. Now in the entrance, you can see a hyena lying there with its nose tucked in. That to me looks like koa, color wise and when it was standing up. It's, there's only two that are kind of that reddish color that are still cubs and that would be Koa and Mbilu and this is definitely too big to be in Debele's little one so by process of elimination I'm going with Koa at the entrance and then kind of behind the log we had either Swazi or Ndebele just now but they are currently lying flat sleeping in the vegetation where we can no longer see whichever one it is but all we can see was the shape of the face just now and the color of the fur and definitely either Swazi or Ndebele but I think considering it is so cool today, they're enjoying a bit of time out of the den, not having to hide from the sun. Ah, oh, thank you for confirming that so quickly, everybody. Team Bensa Warriors doing pretty well. We've now got three in a row, which is awesome. Thank you very much. But yes, I think these hyenas are going to be quite sleepy. I was hoping they might be a little bit more playful. Um, considering the weather, but maybe they're just waiting a little bit. They're going to have a long night ahead of them being nocturnal and they're going to come out a little later. Maybe they'll see if they can follow that herd of buffaloes that Ben had at Twin Dam this, this morning. Maybe they'll see if they can find some wild dogs or even wander up to quarantine to check out the lions. Koa would probably stay around the area and maybe go towards Treehouse Dam or Twin Dams at the, at the most. But she's not quite wandering all the way up to quarantine just yet that we know of or that we've been able to confirm. That being said, every time we drive around we are seeing tracks of adults and we are seeing tracks of little cubs. But um, whether or not... <laughs> oh, we've got some movement. Whether or not um, that would definitely be Koa, I cannot confirm. But I wouldn't think so. I, th I would think it would be Matimba and Spirit. They're slightly smaller than Mbilu. So their tracks are still quite little. But they are looking beautiful. You can kind of just see the side of the adult at the bottom there. In between the log and the, the clump of grass, there's a hyena's side sticking out of the grass there. So that's one of the adults, and then of course the cubby in the entrance. It is very tough to tell, and unfortunately with the den being on Little Gari, it means we've got very limited visuals. But as soon as we see hyenas here, we always try our best to sh at least show them to you. I'm hoping we might find Ribbon Matimba Spirit around Twin Dams, maybe towards the Mulawati. They're always nice to catch up with. And they seem to be spending a lot of time around there. And also a Treehouse Dam. But we haven't been past either of the dams yet. So our plan to get out of the way, because we are on Gari Main and there are other vehicles waiting. You can imagine the Hyena Den is very popular. In fact, I can see one coming towards us at the moment. Um, our plan is to go towards Twin Dam, see if we can find those buffaloes, and then head towards Treehouse Dam to see if we can find a hippo. Because we need hippo and buffalo in one row, but we also need giraffe and dung beetle in the other row. So our row of three, maybe we can show you. Our row of three, which has just been completed with the addition of the hyena sticker. That's the one that we're going to potentially try for now, but if we can tick off the other ones as well, that would be great. So there's the row of three. There's the hyena that's just been added, so that takes us up to three. At least we're catching up, not as close as Kevin, but almost. I think Kevin still just needed a hyena, actually. Didn't yeah, he? quite funny. Um, and then this is what we're hoping for as well. If we can get buffaloes and then the hippo at Treehouse Dam, because uh, obviously Tristan's on Chitwa, so we can't head over that way, then we would need dwarf, dwarf mongoose and waterbuck. So it doesn't look like it's a very full row, but they are fairly... Uh, I wouldn't say easy species to find, but maybe easier than something like a fish eagle or a rhino or a scrub hare or a wild dog at this time. So we'll be trying for giraffe and dung beetle, we'll be trying for hippo and buffalo, and then hopefully dwarf mongoose and waterbuck fill in as well. See if we can get two rows done. I'm hopeful for the dung beetle by twin dams, because even if the buffalo have moved off, there's plenty of dung. Yes. Which would suggest beetles, but as you said, it is a little bit cool. And strangely, we haven't actually seen one yet driving around. Yeah. But yeah, I think this is definitely doable. Giraffe's a bit hit and miss here, but, but there's plenty the of areas. areas. Yeah, plenty of areas we haven't checked yet. So yeah, Twin Dams, Treehouse Pan, and um, we've seen giraffe at Treehouse Pan quite regularly. Mm. So let's see. But it's looking good. I'm it hopeful. Is. I'm hopeful. It could be one of those bam moments around the corner and there's a giraffe 
With a dung beetle on its back, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's all we can hope for. But we are going to have to move off. We're not going to be able to stick around at the den, unfortunately. So we're going to head off because, remember, Gowrie Main, it is a very busy road. There have been a, a few vehicles trying to get past us, and we definitely don't want to hold up the queue. So we're going to keep going. That's yeah, next stop, do. Twin Dams. Twin Dams, Twin Dams. So there were about three or four hundred buffalo there this morning, although whether they are still there I don't know because obviously that's also very close to Gary Main and buffalo do keep moving. When I left them this morning at about half past eight they were all just lying down and ruminating but that was quite some time ago now so I'm sure we'll pick up tracks crossing Gary Main if they did come south. Hopefully they went north into Juma so we can track them and actually be Yeah, it would be nice if they went back north. Sure, wind's picking up. Here at Wild Earth, we strive to show you that animals have emotions like humans do. And this festive season, we are celebrating their sentience with our new Animals Have Emotions range. Help us bring awareness to animals this Christmas with our new designs that launch on Black Friday at a discounted price. Because empathy for animals is the key in the conservation mission. Head to the Wild Earth shop to find out more. sitting with impalas at the moment and an oxpecker which we obviously thought we would get um, you can see it's just busy feeding off of the impala um, it was a good bet to come to Chitwa airstrip for that um, lots and lots of impalas hanging around here at the moment and so the oxpeckers kind of follow in with them too they uh, try and kind of feed off all the little parasites that are on them there's actually quite a few oxpeckers that have arrived. The impalas, are, they are quite uh, vigorous in their chasing of said oxpeckers. I just want to try and go forward a little bit just to hold Brian. You can see them kind of bouncing up and down there, um, making a bit of a noise, and then see the impalas kicking them off. So that's at least another thing that we can add. If I can find what I've done with my stickers. Um, Oxpecker and impalas, I can put a sticker on. Oh, wonderful. How exciting. Oh, no. If only I could learn how to stick properly and not make an absolute mess out of this. 
stuck it skew and I have OCD with these kind of things so you know, I don't like to stick things skew which I've done you can see the Oxpecker one is now not even sticking properly because of the way I did it there we go. come on hey I mean it's not too bad I feel like my elephant and Oxpecker are pretty in line my water bucks a bit off um, we need things to be right in the middle All right, let me just go forward a little bit and so we can see these impalas Sure, these impalas are loving the fact that they're in this nice open clearing um, and that of late they don't have to sort of worry too much about lions being around. There hasn't been a lot of lions on Chitwa lately. Um, there's, I suppose the hyenas have given them a hard time here um, and chased their little ones because there's lots of lambs. Um, but the one thing that they would probably be most happy about not being here is wild dogs. And when we talk about hunting, wild dogs are always something that's going to come to the fore because of their ability to hunt. Um, but sometimes when they do hunt and the commotion that they cause, they attract some unwanted attention like Nikki had at Engala. Try channel three. This is going to be an interesting interaction. Oh, he's moved around. So, let's see. He's trying to steal something. Here we go. Well, unfortunately, it was a bad day for impalas, um, but very fascinating to watch the interactions of wild dogs and hyenas, and it's invariably what happens is, and that's one of the, the tough parts about being a pack animal that hunts together, um, because of the nature of, of trying to find food together, there's a lot of noise that happens, and that then attracts the attention of scavengers like hyenas. And so invariably when you find wild dogs, um, there's hyenas somewhere close by. In fact, the hyenas often just follow the dogs down the road, even when they're not hunting, um, in the hope that they will start to hunt and they can then kind of be a part of it. Um, so you'll find these poor um, wild dogs are harassed constantly, but having a pack situation and numbers means that sometimes the tables can turn and they can then push those hyenas back uh, and get them away but I find with dogs it's quite interesting is that they most of the time uh, lose out to hyenas. They're just physically stronger and more abrasive and are quite happy to take a pounding from the dogs and then still try and get to the meat and once they're actually on it the dogs just give up and carry on um, and and to be the sort of weight and size that a dog is means that you know they can't really fight like the lions could um, in that situation but it's always amazing to watch those interactions between those animals and how they go about their business. Um, always love a wild dog hyena interaction. It's, it seems to go back and forth so much and they always end up um, biting one another and the hyenas particularly the way they tuck their bums in when they're running just to make sure that they don't get hurt. And um, there's also some dwarf mongoose on the mound there. I don't know if you can see they're just poking their heads up on the left side of the mound. We do have dwarf mongoose on our bingo board. Um, again, it's not really one that we'll probably be able to fill this afternoon, but we might as well add some red dots um, on here. We have three in one row now, which is fairly good at least. Um, where's my little dwarf mongoose gone? It was there on top of that. That's the dark spot there. There was another one to the right, but I think it's run away. They've all gone down, unfortunately. Oh no. There, what's that on there? That's not it. That's movement of grass. There definitely was one, everybody. I promise you I wasn't making it up. They're always on this mound. I see them here regularly. Um, but it's late now, so they'll be starting to go to bed. And because it's cloudy and overcast and dark, um, I don't suspect that they're going to be wanting 
to spend too much time out. Um, they'll try and get in and try and hide away. <laughs> Heather, you say we're catching up fast. We've got this on Team Rooster. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure we're catching up that fast. We'd, it would be nicer if we could have, uh, you know, put on the dung beetle earlier. Then we would have just needed the fish eagle. Um, which, again, because of the time of day, dung beetle and fish eagle is going to be very, very tricky now. Um, I would imagine fish eagles are roosting somewhere and the dung beetles, well, they won't really be active at night. Um, I mean, they are, I suppose, but there's not been a lot of them. So maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky and find one. Um, it's just hard to find things at night that are that ilk. Um, they're small and easily missed. Alright, so apparently we got confirmation about our dwarf mongoose. I don't know, was there one actually on the frame? I didn't see it, but we'll take it anyway. Um, so we're going to put our little sticker on, and in the meantime, though, let's send you across to Tessa and Ben. Right, well, our plans for buffalo seem to have been scuppered somewhat because we went to Twin Dams and all we found was evidence of tracks crossing Gary Main, which is a little disappointing. Uh, but we're not giving up hope. We're checking elephant carcass towards Treehouse Dam A to see if maybe some of the buffalo change directions at which Treehouse Dam, but I don't think so. But we are very much expecting to find a hippo at Treehouse Dam, which we do need which doesn't give us any more of our line, but we are building scoreboard pressure. That's the important thing. We're going to put a little bit of pressure on Kevin. And um, Tristan. And Tristan as well. I believe he's also catching up. So it's all getting rather tense. And I believe Tristan just found dwarf mongoose. We're also which looking. Which we also need, yeah. And dung beetle. We're looking for dung beetle like Tristan is now. We didn't actually see any of the buffalo dung that we thought we would. No, we didn't see one dung beetle. It's not very good weather for dung beetles, but what we actually really need is a nice herd of elephants. Then we'll find some dung beetles, I'm sure. Mm. And we do need elephants as well. That could... Oh, we're, apparently we're going to quickly send you across to Prydens. Okay, oh. apparently we're not going to send you across to Rydlands. <laughs> so you can stay with us whilst we tick off another one because I'm sure we're going to get a hippo in about 30 seconds, which you can corroborate for us. And then I'm hoping there's that big termite mound right by Treehouse Dam as well, where we often see a little business of dwarf mongoose, mongooses, mongai, mongoose. Uh, <laughs> so maybe we can kill two birds with one stone, metaphorically, of course. So um, this is actually one of the first times, I think, if not the first time that I've been back to Treehouse Dam close to sunset. The last time I was here at sunset, I was incredibly upset because, of course, we had just lost Dark Main. We'd just heard about it. And uh, so it's, yeah, it's different for me coming back, I suppose, looking at the sunset over Treehouse Dam. But just a reminder that we are doing our Dark Main Ask Me Anything tonight, myself and Tristan. Uh, so we'll be answering as many questions as we can. If you want to join us for that 8 p.m. Central African time, join us to pay a little bit of a tribute to Dark Main, one of our most beloved characters that we unfortunately lost in the last week. It was a very sad goodbye. Remember, it is exclusive to explorers only, but we are looking forward to seeing you there and giving him another send-off. Indeed. Right, well, we're at Treehouse Dam. And worryingly, I see no sign of a hippo yet, but they can hold their breath for a few minutes if needs be, so we will sit here patiently and see if he's just under the water, and almost always here. Otherwise, we shall just enjoy the sounds of the felt. Right, well, it seems we're supposed to send you across to Tristan because he's found something else on his list. But if I just keep talking, then theoretically yeah, maybe we, we, we won't do that. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for the hippo. <laughs> <laughs> that was very underhanded. So no, we'll send you across to Tristan quickly whilst we hope our hippo surfaces.
Well, that's what happens when we uh, bring Ben in. It seems like he's pulling out tricks from Cedric and cheating, apparently. Not wanting to come to us because we have a dung beetle. Um, quite a nice find. There's a fresh impala poos that are here. Um, and so the dung beetle is busy building its ball. It's actually fascinating to watch how they go about it. So they just grab little pieces and then slowly with their front legs, they attach it, smooth it all out. And then they go rolling around to the next little bit of dung that they can find. And they then compact that in until the size of the dung ball is adequate for their needs. Um, and it depends. Sometimes they build really big ones. Sometimes it's smaller ones. Um, but it's found a nice little fresh pile of poo there. Sorry. Sorry about that, everybody. Shift with radio is really very loud and very static, so it makes a lot of noise. But it's a very, very, very little fresh pile of poo, and that is actually not very big at all. Um, it looks gigantic on the screen to all of you guys, but that whole setup there, both the rolled ball and the fresh poo on the right and the dung beetle, is no not even the width of my palm. Um, it's quite small, um, but like I say, luckily with cameras, um, we have these days we can get in nice and close. Right, so dung beetle is confirmed. So that makes it four in a row for us. So now we just need to find this fish eagle, which you would think Chittadam would be the place to find a fish eagle. Maybe we need to employ some help from the viewers that watch dam cam. Did anyone see a fish eagle at dam cam today? I wonder if maybe there was a dam cam update on fish eagles today. I did see a fish eagle there, was it yesterday morning? No, two mornings ago when we had Clalamba. There was a fish eagle at the dam cam. Um, but we'll go past Chitwa Dam one more time just in case we maybe missed it in one of the marula trees or something like that. And we get lucky and we find them again. I mean, this was a very random find. There was no dung beetles on any of the piles of dung that I've been trying to um, search through the course of this afternoon. Um, except for one that we found way earlier. Um, way, 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 way in the beginning. Um, but unfortunately, um, that was not, uh, we didn't have signal at the time. But there we go, there's our dung beetle. So we have dung beetle, waterbuck, oxpecker, and elephant. And so fish eagles should be, like I say, should have been a fairly easy one to get um, at Chitwa Dam. They're normally around. So we'll go, like I say, one more time. Maybe we get lucky and find them. But it'd be a nice way just to come from nowhere to win. It's always Chitwa. Chitwa is always the place to come when we have these competitions, whether it be um, bingo or um, birding day. It's always got a winning combination. There's just so much diversity here, you know, between the, the airstrip and the the actual um, water hole. There's a lot of animals that move around. All right, so let's leave our dung beetle here. Um, oh. There we go. Ah, Rusty, you and I need to get back together again. I think on Monday when Ben leaves, I'm going to be straight back into Rusty for the rest of the week. All right, let's carry on. Let's go back down towards the dam, see if we can't see a fish eagle somewhere there. Failing that, we'll head towards Gari Dam and see if there's anything there. We are not going to tell you if there's a fish eagle anywhere, Tristan. <laughs> We're not going to tell you. <laughs> but seriously, well done on the dung beetle. We are still looking for one. We've kind of narrowed it down because there was no hippo at Treehouse Dam. Mm. There were no buffaloes or twin dams. We've had to narrow it down to giraffe and dung beetle. So we're looking for a dung beetle. We might sneakily head towards the surrounding area of Gari Dam, hoping for the same dung beetles that Tristan got. <laughs> but for now, we're going to go and check towards Philemon's cut line because maybe there'll be giraffes around here somewhere. We can't let Tristan beat us. Yeah, I feel rather hard done by no buffalo and no hippo. There's always a hippo in Treehouse Town. <laughs> But I've seen giraffe on this road a few times now. I don't actually is this is this a savage no, is this Savage's track? It is Savage's track. Yeah, there's a female with a sort of a a sub adult male I've seen on this road a few times, so keep an eye out. And I did see a giraffe between Quarantine and Rebecca's this morning, so our plan is to go this way and then up Shabamu towards Philemon's cut line and then to, towards Rebecca's as uh, Tess said. But I'm amazed we haven't seen a dung beetle yet. They've been everywhere. But I think after dark, if nothing else. 
once we put the lights on, we will start attracting insects to us. But <laughs> I worry that it might be too late by then. Yeah, well, everyone's so neck and neck at the moment. Mm. Unreal. But I mean, we thought that we were, you know, kind of being kind to Tristan when we chose his board, but I feel like we should have been a little bit tougher, maybe. Pity. <laughs> Next time I'm going to choose him a really hard one. <laughs> Let's make him his own special board. <laughs> Pangolin, aardvark, <laughs> serval, caracal, unicorn. <laughs> make it totally doable. We're going to have to do something, Ben, and we're going to have to do it fast. If yeah, we are running. Now. We're running out of daylight soon, but the IR, we can still do giraffe at night with the IR camera. But yeah, I fear with only hyenas and fish eagles to find. At least Tristan won't find a fish eagle after dark. Mm. He says, hopefully. It is a it is a close race. It is a close race, and we're putting all our eggs in one basket. We're rolling the dice. We are here at the Ahina Den, the Piri Lachai, meaning Ahina House, literally translated. And guys, yeah, they were here this morning. The temperature's dropping. We're going on to quarter past six. And that is normally the time that they will start getting active. We had three adorable pups this morning, running or walking around the vehicle. And that is what we are basing our whole animal bingo race on. So, fingers crossed, we're going to sit it out. Oh, Chris, I heard you found our hinners. If we can just teleport them our way, we'll be very great. grateful. Let's head over to Chris for the time being. This day is just getting better and better and better. My first view of our hyena cubs at our own den site. Looky, looky, looky at them. And there is one adult just behind them. So just to let you know that we're not. You can see there in the background, the big female. And look at the cuteness. And they're already turning white. You know, they actually older than I thought, or actually the reports that I got. Mind you, it was about a month ago that we had reports of them. And it took me more than a month, almost, well, almost a month, in order to find them. And the other thing is, I need to get a sticker out here. So as soon as we can get confirmation that you agree that this is a hyena cub, <laughs> I can put it on. And that will give me also three in my top line. Oh, goodness, there we go. <laughs> now, we need a butterfly and a kudu, or a giraffe and a grey heron. All doable. All definitely doable. <sighs> Weather-wise, I'm not so sure about the butterflies, but anyway, let's look at these hyenas. You know, I'm happy to even... sort of relinquish my attempt or chances to win just to see these little guys that is a highlight we found some cats like a lot of them today we even had a brief visual of a very nervous leopard believe it or not uh, but it was a very nervous cat uh, we didn't stick with it we didn't even attempt to go live with it it's a 
young female that we started seeing around our access road. Uh, but very nervous, very, very nervous. And these guys are very relaxed on the other hand. Here comes the mum. And this is very important with the habituation process. Super relaxed. Magic stuff. Finally I get to see them. Hi, Sinak. Sinak agrees that these little ones are so adorable. <laughs> And I've missed them, you know. I haven't been to Juma since, I think, March. The last time I saw Ahina Cubs. I've just been so occupied here at Pridelands. I'm sure I'll make a plan somehow to get to Juma at some stage. I'm sure we'll start to see more and more of them as they obviously starting to habituate to the cause. They'll come out more and more as they grow older. They will spend more and more time just like the ones at Juma. I mean, we've been through this in and around the den sites. They'll start to systematically explore further and further and further away, becoming a bit more brave. Fantastic. They're actually starting to look like hyenas now. They're starting to lose that sort of bear cub type of look to them. And what I just said about being bold and becoming more and more you know, brave to just go that extra meter further every day away from the, the entrance of the den. And mom's just keeping a watchful eye. And that belly is huge. The report is that she found a, a dead warthog. Um, yesterday, in fact, and devoured it. Not sure what caused the mortality. But you can see there's some... Um, a lot of meat in that stomach. That's very full. So she's going to produce some very good quality milk in the next coming days. Debbie Jean says, Welcome to Wild Earth, you little cubbies. Yes, indeed, a very, very warm welcome to you little fluff balls. I mean, how can you not enjoy watching them? So many people find them ugly, and you know? I, I just don't get it. They're adorable. I'm also hoping that, just like what we experienced at Juma, that more and more females of the clan will join up. And this clan used to be big, apparently, at one stage. But it sounds like they scattered quite a lot. Right, we're not going to put too much pressure on these guys yet. I think they were very welcoming, but I think let's get over to Tessa and Ben. I think they might just be in a position to add another 
bingo animal to their board. have got our giraffe we are also in the four in a row club we just need that pesky dung beetle which surely you'd think should be quite doable <laughs> but it's a youngster i haven't been able to sex it yet before it disappears uh, but we estimate probably about a year remember when a giraffe is born it's nearly two meters at birth and it almost doubles in height in its first year it grows about half a centimeter a day during its first year we're going to try as we move forward, forward a touch <laughs> I'm glad you came when you did because he's not playing ball but we had tracks on Philemon's cut line and thankfully he was still visible from the road but I'd only barely he... yes just as you saw but mum should be around somewhere it's a bit young to be out on his own so maybe young's mum is deeper in the bushes how does such a big animal disappear so easily it's, <laughs> a, it's just mind blowing it is eh? <laughs> yeah, gone. it's gone oh it's there I can see your shoulder. Oh yeah, there's something there. I can yeah. see your shoulder. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Could you shoulder. see it there, Paul? Okay. Yes. We've... Confirmed. At least you can see some spots moving in the grass there. Just that is dug. four. I'm desperately, in a whilst row. we're parked here, looking for movement in the grass for a dung beetle, so we can wrap this up. I think maybe quarantine might be a good bet for that, Ben. With all the animals that move through the traffic, the mm. amount of dung. That gets deposited on quarantine is quite impressive so true. maybe we can try there after this because now it's literally us tristan and kevin with four it is the pressure is on this Officially. has been the close i don't think we've had such a close no bingo finale since we've been doing this unreal aren't you gonna show us your head again Probably feeling down, so definitely behind the the silver cluster leaf. So its head is down, not up, which is why we can see that kind of hump of the shoulders and a bit of the rump. Oh, maybe none of it anymore <laughs> now. Yeah, there it goes. But at least oh, we had it. Short but sweet, indeed. Short well, but let's sweet. continue our dung beetle search. Yeah, in let's, that case. What see. do you think, quarantine? I think so. Yeah, let's go Zoe's up towards quarantine. You don't want to just turn around and go straight back to quarantine. I suppose it's quicker to go. Yeah, the other, yeah it's quicker to go the other way. The competition is on, Ben. <laughs> A battle of the ages has begun. Now one guide reigns victorious, the rest covered his crown. Now, back by popular demand, it's Animal Bingo. It's time for a shot at redemption, to become the safari <laughs> king or queen. Scores will be kept on a leaderboard and the ultimate winner will be crowned on Christmas Day. Catch the chaos and contention on every Saturday Sunset Safari. Bingo Saturday.
uh, here it's now a three horse race for animal bingo on the Saturday afternoon we are still being patient we do hear noise from the den but there is no visual yet so and I'm very certain that won't count but it's definitely this time of the day that we can expect them White Mane, as far as I know, this Pacific clan, excluding the, the little ones at the moment, is six, seven individuals. So that will, together with the three new ones, you're looking about eight, nine, as far as I know. They roam a big area, this Pacific clan, they've got a, a big area that they roam. And it's nice to see that there is three additions to the clan white mane. It's almost like a whimpering noise we're hearing, but I'm, it's very, very faint. Beak, I had to, uh, I had to listen quite, quite in intensely to actually hear it. Beak, I heard it. Maybe it's just wishful thinking from our side, who knows, but <laughs> positive thinking from our side, shall I say. Well, normally you have the adults around the den site this time of the day, just before they start heading out on their nightly adventures. Looking at those beautiful sickle bush flowers. All the sickle bush are flowering this time of the year. Looks like little lanterns. And yes, we know we could have been driving around. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy. Thank you for having faith in us. Yes, uh, I think it's just a matter of time. And Darcy, yes, we could actually could have decided to drive around and see what else we can find. But then again, we're so close. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy. And it's getting nice and cool now. It's cooling down. The sun has just set behind 2020, the big hill that dominates the center of Medique. It's just dipped behind it. And the second it dips, you can actually feel the temperature dropping as well and we are not complaining. It was another steamy day. Now, this den does actually consist of several entrances. The one we are looking at at the moment is where we've seen the most activity. Lily Pan, I'm saying exactly the same. In my mind, I'm willing it on. I'm straining my eyes on that hole every second. I'm looking around if I can't see any of the, of the adults maybe skulking around, but nothing yet. Also trying to look through underneath the cover here if they don't pop out at another 
entrance maybe. I think there's about four entrances here, all interlinked. And that will lead to like a central burrow. This is most probably a disused art fork hole that they did some house improvements on. And for quite a few days we thought that they actually moved den sites because there was a altercation between wild dogs and a hina here about four days, five days ago. The wild dogs pitched up and there was a bit of a standoff. There was also a lioness here yesterday evening apparently skulking around. part of live hunt, a live, uh, a live animal hunt, or in this case, shall I say, insect hunt special we're currently running and showing you over the weekend. Back in 2016, we had that amazing footage of a scorpion hunting a termite, killing it and actually putting it on the back for the baby scorpions to eat. It is amazing footage. Let's go and have a look. Let's watch. There, she's caught a termite. You see that, Brian? She's unfortunately turned her back on you. She seems to be, um, she's caught it in her pincers. She's stung it now with her sting. That will kill the termite. Now let's watch. Does she put it onto her back for the little ones to eat? Or does she just devour it herself? She's waiting for it to die. Yes, she is. She's putting it onto her back. ...able to calculate uh, consequences of their actions. In fact, many mammals aren't able to do that. We tend to think of mammals as being much more sophisticated from an intelligence point of view. So, can a termite tell that the scorpion is a predator? I don't know. Uh, there will definitely be some kind of pheromone given off by the scorpion that perhaps the termites are able to pick up, but they don't exactly seem to be running away from it. I mean, there's one about to climb onto its back by mistake. So I'm going to say no, I don't think they can. There may be some kind of energetic effect where, you know, they, they pick up the energy of the scorpion. That is such a cool clip. I'm actually quite jealous. I've seen many scorpions and I have seen scorpions with babies on their back, but I've never seen one catch a termite and zap it. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, obviously, all scorpions have a relatively potent neurotoxic venom in that Tulsan bulb, that tail of theirs. That looks like an olive thick tail, uh, but quite normal for scorpions to exhibit some parental care and carry their babies on their back like that, usually for the uh, what's called their first instar, if you like, until they shed their skin or they egg dice for the first time. So who'd have thought that even something as small as a scorpion um, would exhibit some parental care? Just goes to show, there's more going on than you think. Speaking of small things, we are frantically searching for our dung beetle. I should be very upset if we lose when all we need to find is a dung beetle, because I must have seen about a thousand over the last week or two. 
And we are struggling to find one. We're checking everywhere where we can think of where there is dung. So we're on a dung safari now. <laughs> you can see Tess is checking very carefully on the road for dung beetles. We're oblivious to anything else. The pressure is most definitely mounting. It's getting quite tense. And Paul, are you also looking? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I must be honest, I'm, uh, I'm starting to feel a bit sick. <laughs> it's making me like nervous. Oh, yeah, well, at least you've won bingo. I've never won bingo, so I'm very oh, excited. Oh, well, then we have to win now. Second, I was sort of proclaiming that second was acceptable, but it's not really, is it? It's not first. But I suppose Kevin hasn't won either. So well, we will wish him. He's done very well on his first day so far. I was going to say we wish him good fortune, but I'm, I'd be lying if that was true. I, I hope he doesn't find his hyena and I hope we find our dung beetle. <laughs> <laughs> of course I don't mean that, Kevin. But the light is beginning to fade now. I'm trying to decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because you can find dung beetles after dark, no problem, and they're often attracted towards the light. But it has been cool and overcast today, which is why we haven't seen much insect activity. We haven't seen any monitor lizards at any of the dams we've been past. So it's been a, a fairly quiet day for the smaller things because of the conditions. But I refuse, refuse to believe we're not going to come across a dung beetle eventually. Yeah, I don't think I've ever focused so intensely on poo before. <laughs> no. So we're heading up towards Viatella Access Sandy Patch Junction, where, is that, where there is that nice open area, and up to Sandy Patch, where there's often a lot of impala and wildebeest and zebras moving through. So yes, we are pretty much now basing our route upon where we think animals might have pooped. <laughs> The things we do, hey? The things we do. I mean, you can tell we're not competitive at all. <laughs> well, Keisha, I'm so glad that you enjoy the bingo as much as we do. I mean, we're definitely not competitive at all, you know? No. Not at all. It's just, you know, <laughs> just another day. <laughs> it's not competitive, it's just really badly wanting to win at yes. the expense of other people. Exactly. That's completely different. That's... There's a scrub hair. We've got scrub hair on our board, but we don't really need a scrub hair. We don't need a scrub help hair. Us, so I'm, I'm sorry everyone, we're going to bypass the scrub hair in search of our dung beetle. I mean, time is limited here, you know? This is ridiculous. I mean, there must, it, we must have driven past hundreds of dung beetles. I mean, on ah, a... there's a... Mm, uh -huh. mm, 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 mm. I'm just thinking, this might be a good place to check down here. It's, it's almost like... There's a couple of impala middens here which we can check. Yeah. It's almost like you... This is where FOMO starts to kick in because you take a route and you go, but what if I'd taken the other one? Like, there's that other midden there. And you, your brain really goes into overdrive, let me tell you. You really do start um, frantically double-guessing yourself as a, as a naturalist, as a guide, as, a, as an avid... Anything? That's there's teamwork, it's all about teamwork. Looking for movement, or there's a big pile of dung here. Looking for something uh, pulsating. Yeah. We've got to get this right, Ben. I thought that area was worth a check, I know there was a big pile of dung there. What's that? That. I think it's... I think that's unfortunately... Oh, it's a, it, it's a dung beetle. I think this one's sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> we had you a can sleeping have to dung so we beetle. Can see it. Well, I was thinking because it's sleeping so nicely, I could oh, maybe, you could pick, maybe it pick it up. Because it's it's that's... sleep. Looks like it's sleeping very very stilly, if that's a word. Soundly. Soundly. Is the that's word you're a far better word. Thank you. I'm too excited to think about yes, vocabulary. Yes, you are too excited to think. Look, it's a, it's it's fast asleep, so I'm going to handle it very gently, so that uh, so that we don't wake it up, because I don't want it to don't want to disturb it or have it move. 
Well, it's the... strategically covered in ants. Is it covered in ants yeah, it's as well? It's covered in ants. Well, that's because they're friends. They are. Yeah. You know, they eat those little mites. They help dung beetles. Or maybe it's a bit like the scorpion and it's oh. helping. Oh, the airing the ants on from its dung back. pile to dung pile. There we go. Absolutely. <laughs> I feel like this is definitely, you know, something that could could yeah. work. Hang on. Let's... Oh, it's moving. Look. It is. Wow. Look, it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> it's just got a really big black tail. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to wait for a judge's ruling on this one. Uh, yes, this is definitely a dung beetle, though. There is no doubt about it. It was next to a pile of dung. And uh, you can also see, let's give it another turn. Sorry, Impul. You can see it's the glossy purple one. And that means, Ben. I, I believe we have just received We've confirmed it. Well played. <laughs> yeah, that was a close up. So we got too excited with the high five. We'll do it again so you can see. <laughs> We've officially won. We win. We win. We Sorry, we win. Not I win. Ben. We win. Team ben Bensa Warriors. Okay, wait, the, let's put it the on. The Bingo Flamingos. The Bingo Flamingos, the Bensa Warriors, Bensa United, Ben, Bensa Poor. We've got it all. Five in a row. Wait for it. Wait for it. Five in a row. Five in a row. Bingo. Oh, Bingo. I'm and strangely that's your first relieved. time winning. It is. Oh, fist bump. Come on. Pow. <laughs> We'll right. take our dung beetle friend with us for now. Okay, let's continue on just to make it official and find a living dung beetle now. Yes. I mean, uh, a non-sleeping dung beetle now. That was the correct terminology, sir. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, wow. Pow, pow, bingo! There's a dung beetle a dung on the dash. It's coming along for In a ride. In case you couldn't see it, it's coming along for a ride. There it is. It is being amazing. We're going to stop on Voyotella Access for you and um, show you our five in a row. All right? It's going to be amazing. Well done, Ben, on your first bingo win. I'm strangely overjoyed. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm trying to keep it in. You're trying to keep it in. It's, it's, <laughs> you're fabulous, darling. Fabulous. Shall we give them another close up, Ben? Of, of me or the dung beetle? Of the dung beetle and then you, <laughs> because you are fabulous. You are part of the Bingo Flamingos Team Ben support. Oh, victory speech, Ben, oh. victory speech. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the rest of our noble competitors um, and obviously the people in my earpiece who gave us such wonderful support through this very traumatic three or four hours that we've had out here. And I'm, I'm, I'm inspired. I'm, I'm quite touched by all the support from you, the viewing public, for all of your confirmations. And we could not have done it without you. Thank you so much. I feel You're like welcome, we have a trophy. Ben. Oh, and, and I must thank, well, that was from both of us, not just me. And, and Tessa, we thank Tessa as well. Thanks, Tessa. We thank me as well. Okay, let's give you a lovely close-up of our dung beetle for anyone that did not see it, just so we can, you know, show you the five in a row. Look at that. It's all with, with ants as well. And Kevin needed ants. So there you go, Kevin. I think he, didn't he get them eventually? I think, I think he did. He needed hyena hands, at the end. Actually, but thank yeah. you to Ernest as well. If you saw the, the MC team in Johannesburg oh, rooting yeah. for the different teams, he betted on us. He Ooh. knew. He knew. Yes, sir. I can shine the spotlight for you. No problemo. Pow. How about that, guys? There we go. Dung beetle. It is one of the purple glossy ones, although you can't see that right now because we're in infrared. Um, unfortunately... It is in a very deep slumber, so it's not going to move. But, it's cold, um, that's why. It is cold, yeah. so the dung beetles are not so active today. But we are going to try and find you a, a more awake one. Danica, I think that was. Thank you so much. Ben, so warriors for the win. I feel very accomplished. Ben, thank you. And thank Paul, you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, I didn't. We didn't thank him, Paul, either. Sorry, I got so carried away with thanking everybody else. There was just, just too many people. You also to didn't thank. thank your family, your friends. You know, the dumb well, I'm, beetle. I'm just awful, basically. Then I'll say I, I, I retract <laughs> everything I said about uh, about winning. I feel I feel cheated now. 
that oh, we, that I won. Don't feel cheated. We won. <laughs> we worked hard for it. I've never looked so hard for a dung beetle in no, my that life. That part is true. We got it, and now we might find some more active ones in the road. I suppose now that we're going to move, but we will also share with you the bingo board. Let's see if we can. There's our five in a row. Pow, 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 pow. Yes, we've actually covered everything. What do we have? Hyena, dung beetle, giraffe. That was kudu. What was under there? Something with a, sm a small thing. A small thing. Yeah, something with a very short, short word. But lions. I still feel that a little was bit. Was that lion? Yes. Oh, that okay, was that was lion. lion. Uh, I still feel uh, that we we should find you a living dung beetle. So we are still going to try and do that. But in the meantime, let's send you back up to Medikwe and to Kevin to see whether he's found his hyena. And there we go. We missed it by three minutes. There's your hyena pups. Literally three minutes. Well done, Ben and Tessa. It was a close run affair. We certainly had a lot of fun. But let's look at these three. The other two is still at the back there. We've changed to infrared. Somehow that's just the way the cookie crumbles, isn't it, BK? It was a close run affair. The one is still here at the den, at the hole. You can just see its head sticking out a bit. I can appreciate there's quite dense in here. There we go. There's your pup, the ones we've been waiting for. As long as as it worked out in the end. The most important thing is to bring you these images. Nice timing, you guys. <laughs> I'm sure they'll come closer. Let's just give them some time. They're actually quite inquisitive. They might come and check out the vehicle. Hey, thank you, everybody. That close run second will take any day. But the most important is that we had such a fun afternoon. Actually moving off again. That was the biggest thing. We'll keep an eye if they come back for you. Right, shall we have a sticker parade? Why not, BK? Let's, why not? <laughs> There's your last one. Leah, thank you so much. Thank you, we, I know we could count on your support, Leah. We really appreciate it. Yes, it was a close run affair. Good congratulations to both Tessa and Ben. As I said, the most important thing, we had so much fun. And they are skulking in the back again. I don't think if we reposition, we'll, we'll get a better visual. I think this channel up here is probably our best bet, so let's just be patient a bit. I can just make them out walking in the background. We're going to stay here a while longer and see what these three ones get up to.
Wild Earth Explorers, this one's for you. You stand a chance to head off to the wondrous Camp Fig Tree Mountain Safari Lodge, situated on the border of Addo Elephant National Park, for an unforgettable three nights day for two. Witness the incredible elephant herds at Addo firsthand and explore with an open vehicle safari tailored to you or a relaxing bush picnic. Sign up to be an explorer to treat yourself to a much needed way. Just look at this footage. These are in our... Pops are so close that we can actually cannot tilt the camera down far enough. They are sniffing the left back wheel of our vehicle. This one here is a little bit more careful. But the rest of them, there you go. Super inquisitive. Just letting you enjoy the moment. spots of course will fade a little bit as they get older the spots do tend to get a little bit duller Thank you very much, Maki. It's always nice to know that we do things right. And what makes us stick, Maki, is to actually bring you this footage.
then we feel we've had a successful day. If you're happy, we're happy. It actually came from at the back there, so I, I wonder if the uh, if they weren't lying up right at the back there in the thickets with the adults, and it was as the adults were starting to move off on their nightly hunt and scavenge patrols that they actually now left these off and, they, and that is why these ones actually returned closer to the den. Yeah, you come again, huh? You come in to investigate again. What do you want? <laughs> What's your business here? BK has got the camera tilted up to the max. Hello to you, Ella. Ella, isn't that the cutest thing you've seen? Just look how inquisitive they are. Now, Ella, the, the males of a Hina clan, at this stage, they will actually be off with the clan starting their nightly hunt. Now, Ella, all something startled them. Now, Ella, all, um, all females are hyenas are higher ranked than the males. The males actually just hang around on the periphery. They get picked on a bit by the females. Their own real, only real job, Ella, is to actually mate. And then, of course, they help with the clan structure, can I say. They are part of the clan, but they have got a very inferior role. So, for the well, sadly, we did just lose Kevin there. And to everyone that doesn't know, I'm Alex. And I'm currently coming to you from Okakuyo with four lovely Angolan giraffe here this evening. Really, what a time to be alive. A fantastic afternoon of bingo. And of course, four lovely Angolan giraffe now at the water's edge. Some Egyptian geese, some sand grouse, and a fantastic sunset in the distance over there. Quite a scene. And really a lovely way to end off a Saturday bingo and safari. Four beautiful giraffe across here. I know a couple of the others were looking for them. And unfortunately, we got them here. It would be very unfair for us to play from the dam cams because we would win. It's just as simple as that. But um, really a lovely lovely evening and really tranquil right now of course it is starting to cool down and the sun starting to hit that horizon but from one beautiful scene to another but in infrared with Ben and Tessa in Juma We found ourselves a Senegal lapwing with a chick. I'm just trying to figure out now if this is the chick or the adult uh, because they've separated from each other now and I need a, a piece of reference here, a size reference, 
Uh, but I'm wondering if these were the ones that I found, because I found that one chick a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, down by Viotella Sandy Patch uh, Junction, and we haven't seen it for a long time, and we're up now off of Cutline Sandy Patch, and we had an adult with a little chick running around, so I'm wondering if it's the same ones, uh, but obviously we do have a few in this area. Uh, so it may not be, but very nice to see. But there was, they were walking together, and then they've separated themselves. Quite difficult to, I think this is the chick. It's difficult to get a size thing now, but I don't see the white on the belly, which I would expect to see for an adult. So I think this is the young chick. It was probably standing about four inches high, which probably makes sense looking at the grass around it, but it's moving further and further away from us now, which makes it a bit tricky. And right towards the pole of the rain roof, of mm. course. But yeah, I think, oh no, there's the chick. There's the, adult. There's the chick, there it is. Much smaller. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the size reference. Oh, went into hiding. Yeah, the wind is blowing. It's quite cool now, so using mum for a little bit of shelter. <laughs> I could have repositioning to try and get comfortable. Not easy as that chick gets bigger and bigger to hide it adequately under the wings. one's hunkered down so it is uh, getting quite cool now okay so we are going to see if we can head back if these two actually move off but for now it's time to look at another amazing memory for our on the hunt weekend Welcome, welcome back to the Maasai Mara. We have Malaika and her two boys that are stalking up towards an unsuspecting, I think it's an Oruby, uh, a tiny little antelope, which is sort of perfect sized prey for a female cheetah. Oh, there we go. She's going, she's going, she's going, she's going. There she goes. She's after that tiny Oruby. Oh, it's gone the other way. It's gone in towards the little boys. I think it's gone. Oh, no, they've got it. They've got it. Now, hold on, everyone. We need to get in there. Hold on. Oh, no, it escaped. It escaped. Sorry, Craig. But shame. There we go. They've got it. She let the two little boys. She's letting the boys practice. She's letting the boys hone their hunting style. This is a female cheetah teaching her two young cubs how to kill. So, as I said, this can be very difficult to watch, but it's going to stead these young cheetah boys in very good stead. There we go. That's it. Get, oh, no. They're just not managing to grab that final sort of suffocating grip. There we go. Come on, get hold of it properly. Get hold of that throat. There we go. Now, I'm pretty sure that little antelope has moved on to the next plane. An absolutely incredible view into how predators learn how to hunt. And it's very cool to be able to witness that cheetah mom teaching her boys how to actually kind of take over those ropes and actually start learning how to do things properly or the right way. And we were lucky enough to see that a few times, even with Tlalamba. I remember starting with Liam and Tlalamba letting her young male cub try to kill that diker. And eventually she actually stepped in and took over. But such a vital learning curve for those young predators. Yep, exactly. Experience is key. We see it everywhere, if you, especially if you watch the baby elephants and things, trying to learn how to use their trunks, but in predators, yeah, very much so. Um, certainly the, the experiences I've had with leopards, you normally see the youngsters pretty much figuring it out for themselves. But mm. it's, uh, I heard all about that sighting. Obviously, I know Liam as well, and he was telling me what an incredible sighting it was. So mm. very, very cool and amazing stuff to watch and to witness, as you said. Harsh, but they've got to learn somehow. Yeah, even in Amakala, if we look at the cheetahs that we that we see there, we've we've seen glimpses into that part of a predator's life a couple times. So, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, well, we had a brief visual of the chick there. You may have seen uh, it popped out and then it's gone to hide underneath Mum again with those nice downy feathers which trap all the air. 
So I think from here we're going to go and check around Shortcut Gallego. Maybe there are some last minute spots in the offing for this evening. Right, well, we're just bumbling along the cut line at the moment. We just bumped into the guide from the north and they were saying, they, do, how well do I know Shadow? Because they were like, no, they think that they saw her. 100% um, not Shadow, obviously. Um, it's in Kanyeni that they've got there. And they're like, no, it's not in Kanyeni. This cat was younger. I'm like, I'm, I promise you it's in Kanyeni. Um, so <laughs> it's quite funny just to see how sometimes like cats after a good meal and throw everybody off um, they say that she's pregnant as well which would be some sort of miracle given that she's 17 um, but it's not her I mean it is her so I, I, maybe she's just eaten well I know she just came off an impala kill out of the Manuleti um, recently so with all the lambs around and her experience I wouldn't be surprised she's just taking advantage of it and managing to grab what she needs um, right, I actually need to get back to spotlighting. I was trying to call the guy on the radio to just tell him it's 100% because when they left, I said it's not shadow for sure. And I'll take a screenshot and just have a look. Distinctive. Now, unfortunately, it seems like we are not going to have signal here, which is par for the course. I'm just going to turn off, and I'll have to regale you with stories about who or how he is actually identified. So, like I say, she's got these little lines of her eye here. There's like two little lines here, and then a little V shape over her right eye and then that nick in the right ear as well. Um, so she's quite an easy cat to identify. She's old um, and she's got a very little or kind of a droopy eye. Um, she has this kind of quite sad face often, which um, is kind of how you can recognize her. But she's doing really well then if the guys are saying that she's looking good. So hopefully she'll be all right. Anyway, we're going to carry on. Let's go see what we can find. Hopefully we can find a cat of our own. Okay, so we've just turned on to Shokogwari from uh, Bofusa Cutline. So over here somewhere on the right is where we left Tabungumi last night, but he was generally going north and we know he spends a lot of his time north of us in Bofusa and the southern area, the Manulesi. But he was very full when we left him. So we thought we'd just double check, you never know. I don't think anyone's been up here yet this afternoon, but we've seen no evidence. But you never know, I seem to have quite good luck. I consider Shortcut Gwari, which runs down towards Gwari Pan and that area, this is my lucky leopard road. I've seen more Shortcut. leopard on this road than Gallego, anywhere else. Maybe? What did I say? Gwari. Gwari, I meant Gallego, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Shortcut Gallego and Gallego Pan. That one too. <laughs> Thank you, Tess. You're welcome. <laughs> But that was such an incredible sighting of Tavungumi last night. I was looking through some of the videos and things we were able to get of him. And uh, that, those shots that uh, Rian got of him drinking next to us there were... Strangely, the thing that I enjoyed most about that, other than obviously the, the great views of the left himself, was the ripples he was creating. They just Those perfect concentric circles of the ripples made by his tongue whilst he was lapping just seemed to be the perfect... Um, compliments to the leopard itself. It just works so well. We have seen a chameleon, but I'm not expecting to see too many tonight again because of this cooler weather. It is... I'm borderline putting a jacket on and I grew up in England, and so I don't mind coolish weather, but it is getting quite chilly now. 
And, do, and we've hardly got any insects, which is weird. This time of night for the last couple of weeks, we've been getting inundated with insects with the lights on, but it's very quiet this evening. Which actually is a bit of a blessing in disguise. Yeah, normally you're quite worried to open your mouth and speak because you're mm -hmm. worried you might inhale about 10 in one go. <laughs> Rock Candy, thank you so much. I'm glad that myself and Ben could make you laugh. <laughs> we are very good friends, so we tend to we tend to feed off of each other's sense of humor and energy quite well. <laughs> yeah, it has been good fun this afternoon, certainly. And uh, say from a bingo perspective, uh, it's definitely the closest one that we've had for sure. I think since we've been doing this. I mean, I feel like we made a pretty good catch up as well because uh, the oh. others were on four for quite a while, and then we, like you, actually almost preempted earlier. We kind of caught it up. Well, and I don't really want to make a big deal out of it, because, but I do feel slightly bad that our, our dung beetle was in such a deep sleep. But it was confirmed by, by you all, so thank you very much for that. And we just, we just do as we're told, we play by the rules. Uh, so we'll take it. But I feel a bit bad for Kevin. <laughs> and his hyena yeah. as well. So yeah. maybe we'll, well share three minutes the though. Three minutes is still quite a long time in the bush. Anything absolutely, can happen in a few absolutely. seconds. So we beat him by three minutes. And even if it was sleeping, it was still a dung beetle. It doesn't change who it is. Yeah, in fairness, it doesn't specify uh, state. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say awake or sleepy or going to the bathroom. That would be a good one. <laughs> We've had a few empty. good moments of animals going to the bathroom recently. <laughs> we could have used some this evening. It would have been our last circle a little bit easier. <laughs> Strangely what we have seen quite a few of is millipedes. There have been lots of millipedes trundling across the road this evening and actually in camp last night uh, whilst I was going back to my room after dinner I found mating millipedes which was very cool to see because I had mating giant African land snails a couple of weeks ago as well. But these two millipedes were all intertwined um, and you could see the sperm transfer was taking place because it's actually one of the ways you can sex a millipede if you were going to pick him up, obviously it's a little bit distressing if you do pick him up, but if he's relaxed, he might let you. If you look at his underside and count down to the seventh segment, you'll see that on the male, there are no legs on that segment, and that's actually where the sort of the sexual organs are housed. Uh, and then he'll create a little, what's called a spermatophore, uh, which is like a little parcel of sperm further down on the body, and then he sort of passes it up his legs, a bit like a conveyor belt, and then they are absorbed by those the proper name for them is gonopods, and that is what is then inserted into the female for sperm transfer. But it was quite nice to see them all intertwined together. It was, well, I might be pushing it to say it was romantic, but it was uh, nice to see them all sort of tied up like, should I say that? No, it's all intertwined like that, let's say that. Okay, before I dig a hole here, let's send you over to Kevin and Madikwe. <laughs> It's now almost completely dark. There's a little bit of light left on the western horizon. And it was a busy day all around here in the African bush. And we were looking right on the edge of the infrared light. We're looking at a herd of impala just lazily, lazily grazing away. Actually, such a fitting moment. Impalas do not get enough camera time. They do not get enough recognition. And that's why we saw them and said, let's stop. Let's just, let's just look at the humble impala. They're also in the open for the night. And know where it's safe. Of course, you actually see much more than we do. If I look with my naked eye, I can't see that impala, but with the infrared light, you can just still make them out. So 
see the little eyes flickering. All the crickets are out, all the night noises are starting up. And we're sitting here, just enjoying the moment. Now and then you can see the, uh, the eyes flicker. That is actually what you call the Tupaitum lucidium. And I'll tell you more about that. Jamie Lee, the Impala population is doing very well in Medique. And I promise you tomorrow we're going to show you some of the bigger herds. You, there's herds of two to three hundred. Current population, you're looking at about five thousand, five thousand five hundred impala. So very healthy population. And of course, the lambs are only now starting to come. And uh, Jamie Lee, we can expect that to increase. So they're doing very well. Tomorrow I'll bring you some big herds of impala, I promise. That reflection in the eye that, we, that you saw, and even now you can still pick it up, that is actually a reflective layer behind the retina called the Tupaitum lucidium. And what it does, so the light will enter the eye, bounce through, bounce off the Tupaitum, back onto the retina again, so it is, in a way it gets two takes at the, at the available light. Passes through first, mirror, bite the patum, bounces it back again, records it for the second time. And that is why animals can see much better than us at night. And that is why you can see that reflection. It's that the patum, that mirror, reflecting back at you. Hello everyone. My name is Tanya Ray. I'm from the United Kingdom. I am absolutely thrilled to have won a stay at the Itali Safari Lodge. For me, this is like a dream come true. And I would just like to say, thank you very much, Wild Earth. Sign up, and it could be you getting out there experiencing it for yourself. Wild Earth Explorers, it's in your nature.
the perfect way for us to end off our bingo day, I think. Not on this board, but we do have chameleon on a few of the other boards that are still remaining for the upcoming bingo competitions. But a lovely little find. We didn't think we'd find more, but uh, I don't know. This, chameleons are surprising us today. We've seen more chameleons than dung beetles. How often can you say <laughs> that? That's true, actually, yes. How often can you say that? But what a tight competition it has been today, because ultimately between Kevin, Tristan and us, we all had four, and Chris and Trish had three. They were right behind. <laughs> and I know Trish would be absolutely loving this because she is such a fan of chameleons. But, um, wow, what a competition it has been. A very successful day all round, I feel. Indeed. And we won. We did. Oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> you did. <laughs> Again, you did. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. But thanks to everybody who uh, supported everybody and all the different teams, but secretly us behind the scenes, you know. Whoop, whoop. And for sending in your confirmations. We couldn't have done it without you, quite literally. But this little chameleon, it's kind of awake. You can see that the eye is moving, the little black dot. It is watching us, wondering what on earth we're on about about the bingo. <laughs> but for the most part, kind of just hanging out. And that's exactly what, uh, what all of us will be doing later on tonight. I'm sure we'll all be relaxing and soaking in the fun we had playing bingo with all of you. But a seriously good effort to Kevin as well. Your first bingo and you absolutely smashed it. Well done. Just behind us. Absolutely fantastic stuff. But to everyone, Chris, Tristan, Trish, well done. It was fun. It was definitely the most competitive game that we've had so far. Mm. It was it was fantastic. Shame this chameleon must be very chilly tonight. <laughs> okay. Crazy, it's actually cleared slightly as well. I can actually see some stars above our heads, which may mean that it may cool down, of course, because the heat is not going to get trapped. Um, or what? residual heat there is from today is certainly not going to get trapped so it might be a cool evening tonight if it does clear but i can just see the square of pegasus above us which is nice mm. and that means we might be in for a chilly morning tomorrow morning mm. we are expecting rain for the next few days although that being said we were expecting rain this afternoon and it was uh cold and overcast but uh but definitely not raining so hopefully that streak continues and we can uh protect ourselves from that rain but that being said we also know that it is very important but hopefully our luck from today continues as well so thank you to everybody that joined us it was an absolute pleasure having you with us on the back of the vehicles on safari today uh, don't forget about the ama tonight at 8 p.m with myself and tristan but from ben and the rest of the crew thank you again We'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, 5.30 a.m. Central African time. We've got to be up in a few hours, Ben. <laughs> we have indeed, <laughs> but it's always worth it. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And, yeah, we look forward to seeing you bright and early tomorrow morning. Viewer discretion is advised.